Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda Furr, Physician Executive for Primary Care at Community Health Network. When you need care, nothing should get in the way. No barriers or hoops to jump through, just an easy way to get the support you need, however it's best for you. Which is why we offer tried and true points of access, like your primary care physician or your local med check for urgent care and community clinics at Walgreens throughout central Indiana. But we're also adding new ways to get exceptional care, like improved tools in MyChart to connect you with your provider, increased virtual appointments in primary care, urgent care, and even specialty care. We're also expanding virtual access for your behavioral health needs, both for counseling and psychiatry. At Community, you'll always get the best care possible, no matter how you choose to access it. Community Health Network, exceptional care, simply delivered. Visit us at ecommunity.com slash get care. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Getting set for the drop of the pocket, fifth third field in Toledo. Time for Winterfest 2021 between the Indy Fuel and the Toledo Walleye. I am Andrew Smith. It's time for tonight's Keys to the Game, presented by Shelbourne Knee Center. And for the Fuel, I think it's, as Doug Christensen said, these are an important two points. It's get past all of the pageantry and the pomp and realize this is an important hockey game. And once the puck drops, you get past everything else and just realize that you're facing a, a pretty good Toledo team and make the and just play a really solid hockey game tonight. And I think the team that settles down first usually has success. And I think the other thing is just get used to the angles, especially for the goaltenders, and hammer pucks on net. And so those are our keys to the game presented by Shelbourne Knee Center. You can find Shelbourne Knee Center by visiting fixknee.com or calling 888 888- Fix Knee, Shelbourne Knee Center, only works on knees, and they love to work on yours as well. And so they are the sponsors to our keys to the game. The Fuel and Walleye have been introduced, and it's about time to drop the puck here at Fifth Third Field. And before we do that, we will step aside for tonight's national anthem. And so that will come momentarily here. And so and so now let's step aside for tonight's national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America, we ask you please rise. And gentlemen, please remove your caps. Non-uniformed active military and veterans may keep your caps on while rendering the military salute. Tonight, the Toledo Walleye proudly welcome Toledo's own Abby Caracas to lead us in the singing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Band. Bright stars, the 
That's our national anthem this evening at Fifth Third Field in Toledo, Ohio. It's time for hockey between the Indy Fuel and the Toledo Walleye. Andrew Smith along with you. Glad you have joined us this evening. And we are looking forward to bringing this contest to you. The starting lineup for the Indy Fuel, they will begin with the line of Jan Mondot, Jared Thomas, and Spencer Watson up front. And Ryan Zulsdorf and Keone Teixeira on D. The goaltender will be Michael Lackey. He's 1-1 one one with a 2.52 goals against and a 9.17 save percentage. He will be opposed by Billy Christopoulos, former Fuel Netminder, who is 14, who's played 14 games. He's 10-2-2, two two, a 2.55 goals against and a 9.17 save percentage. He currently ranks 15th in the league in goals against average and tied for third in the league with 10 wins. And so... It's about time to begin. Toledo, we gave you the fuel starting lineup. Toledo will send out Conlon Keenan in between the veteran John Albert and Brandon Hawkins, the former Fort Wayne Comet who had a tremendous year last year. The D, Randy Gazzola and Ryan Lowney, and as we mentioned, the goaltender, Billy Christopoulos. The fuel will move from right to left as you picture this rink in your mind's eye. Reverse that direction if you're watching on Flow Hockey. The puck is down, and away we go. The fuel send it into the Toledo end. Jared Thomas battling in the left wing corner for the puck. It squirts free behind the net and is taken by the walleye. Conlon Keenan will bring it up through center across the fuel line, and the play is brought in. On the puck is shot in on the goaltender, Michael Lackey, and he covers up for a whistle. 19.40 to go, 20 seconds gone in the first period. Faceoff will be to Lackey's right. And it's won by Toledo, but held in at the point by Gazzola. He shovels it in behind the net. It comes free and played along the far wall. Spencer Watson tries to take it, but it's taken back by the walleye. They zip it across to Gazzola, right wing boards. Into the right wing corner. The puck squirts free and is collected by the fuels. Jared Tops. He'll skid it up. Head man through center. Mondot. T- tried to tip it into the zone, but it ended up eluding him and going down for an icing. So the puck will come back into the fuel zone. Indy will be unable to change. This group of Watson, Mondot, and Thomas has been out there for a while you know, since the drop of the puck. We've got 19-15 to go in the opening period. Mitchell Hurd to take the draw for Toledo. Again, to Lackey's right. One by the walleye, out to the point. Here's our wrister that goes in behind the net. And Ryan Zulsdorf tries to tie up his man, Keone Teixeira, trying to spike it free as well behind the net. It squirts free over to the near side. Mondot's able to outlet to center. Spencer Watson leaves it for Jared Thomas. He'll backhand it into the Toledo zone. Love down by the walleye. They'll try to bring it in. T.J. Hensick uh, along the right wing boards. They try to feed it up to him. He stops the puck, leaves it for... Keenan, or excuse me, for Hurd behind the net. Comes back out and is cleared by the fuel all the way down. Christopoulos will come out of his goal to leave it for the defense. And Darian Craighead knocks down his outlet. Riley McKay to Craighead, right circle. He shoots, it's blocked. Back up to him, up to the point. It comes, a shot from Kirill Chaika goes wide. And the puck taken by Craighead along the right wing boards. He tries to shoot, but it's blocked down by the walleye. And they're able to clear it out as far as center where it's collected by Jordan Schneider of the Fuel. We'll go D to D with Chaika. The puck tipped into the zone. Indy will go for a change. A CJ Ike in on the four check. The walleye play it to the Fuel line. Keegan Howdeshell into the right wing corner. Craig Wizemerski comes in, making his first shift in a year and a half, and he delivers an early hit. Brady Tomlack tried to take the puck to goal, sent it up top for Parcells. His shot is blocked from the point. Here's another shot from along the goal line on the far side, but the net has knocked off its moorings. So we'll have a whistle. With 17.46 to go in the opening period, the Fuel and Toledo are scoreless. Faceoff will be in the Fuel end, and so far, much of the play has been in the first two minutes and 14 seconds of this one. 
Brady Tomlack to take it for Toledo against Griff Jeska, who's skating as the 10th forward for the Fuel tonight. And he's in between Elmir and Iverson. Fuel when it was Mursky chips it up the far wall, and it comes out to center where it's hammered back in by Parcells. Lackey, the goaltender, leaves it for Wizomirski, and he ended up playing the puck right back in on his own goaltender. He was unsuspecting. Iverson's able to chip the puck out to center where it's settled down by Connor Walters of Toledo. Alexi comes back to get the puck. It's knocked down at the line, and Elmir tries to control it. It squirts back to the fuel line. Wizomirski goes over to try to get it along the far boards. John Albert gets there, is able to shake off a check, feed Brandon Hawkins high slot over to the right wing circle. He shoots. It's blocked into the slot. Ryan Loudy steps into one and misses high and wide with a wrister. Jordan Schneider hops on the loose puck and sends it out to center. Jessica tries to dump it in, but Conlon Keenan slowed that down and allowed Lowney to take the puck for Toledo. Puck sent along the boards. Albert across. A look to center for Keenan, but it's broken up by the fuel played out to center. Backhand feed to space in the Toledo zone. Spencer Watson gets to it. And he tried to shoot, but it's blocked into the right wing corner. Collected by Toledo. They'll send it out to center. Drop pass through the neutral zone, and it's sent in wide of Lackey. Keone Teixeira will go back to get it for the fuel. D to D, he goes. And Zulsdorf able to play it up through the neutral zone. Across the line comes Jared Thomas. Tries to curl and drag, but it's raked off of his stick. Held in at the point by Riley McKay. He'll wrist it in through both corners over to the far side. Here's a shot. On from the far boards, and it's steered aside, and the walleye will look for transition the other way. Heard across the line as the play broken up by Kirill Chaika at the blue line, and it is an offside whistle. 15.59 to go, scoreless first period outdoors in Toledo. It's a beautiful night, mid-40s. An unseasonably warm night on the shores of Lake Erie, which is not too far away from here. Fuel will win the draw in the neutral zone, play it as far as the Toledo line where it's settled down. Coming across to get it is Craighead. Backhands it to the Toledo line, but it's broken up and taken back by the former Fuel player and Indy native, Chris Martinet. Wraps it around the boards, but it's knocked down by Indy. Seamus Malone in on the forward check. And forces Cole Fraser behind his own net. Malone still forces Fraser wide, but he stays on the puck and is able to outlet it to center. Head man to how to shell across the fuel line, left side. Takes it to goal, fire, save, made, rebound, put it right back on. And Lackey able to hold that out with the assistance of Darian Craighead, who skates it across center and fires one in on Billy Christopoulos. He'll keep the puck moving, dropping it off to Connor Walters. Around it comes, held in at the point. Keegan Iverson wrists one wide from the left point. Schneider holds it in, and behind the net it comes to Carl Elmir. Tries to shake off a couple of walleye, feeds Ike right circle. He fires from a sharp angle, and it's fought off by Christopoulos. Schneider sends it in behind the net, looking for Iverson. It squirts free over to the far corner where Fraser chips it out to center, and coming back to get it at his own line is Jordan Schneider. He'll take it back behind his own net, and the uh, forecheck of Hawkins forces him to rim it around, and the uh, wall, I turn it over at the line. Here's a chance for the fuel. Coming up this left side, C.J. Ike fires on goal. Christopoulos makes the save. First really good scoring chance of the game comes from C.J. Ike, and the rebound is steered out of play. 14.33 to go. Scoreless first period. And there, C.J. Ike had a two-on-one. Opted to go for the shot, and Christopoulos was able to fight that off with the upper arm. Christopoulos, Martinet, and Parcells all have played for the Fuel. Christopoulos and Martinet last year. Parcells played one game for the Fuel this season. They also have Josh Dickinson who played for the Fuel last year, but he's currently on a call-up to the American Hockey League. They have a number of players called up, as do the Fuel right now. As the walleye ice the puck with 14.21 to go. The Fuel had at one time eight players called up to the AHL, but with the return of Jacob Laguerrier and Riley McKay, it's currently six 
And one of those, Kale Morris signed an NHL contract with the Chicago Blackhawks today. So congratulations to Kale. Walleye sky into the fuel line, settled down by Indy. Mondot across the line to Spencer Watson. He's poke checked nicely by Randy Gazzola, and the Walleye scale the puck back into the fuel zone. Ryan Zulsdorf goes back to get it. Goes D to D to Texera. They head man it through the neutral zone. Spencer Watson tried to turn up the left wing wall, but it was taken back by Toledo. And they'll settle things down in their own zone. And start the breakout. Brandon Hawkins sidesteps a check across center red. Flips it into the fuel end. Goes after it himself in the left wing corner. In behind the net, it comes to Mitchell Hearn. He takes it to the right wing corner and loses an edge. And Riley McKay able to take the puck. Turns his goal and turns it up the ice. Across his own line, across the logo at center, across the Toledo line, up the left side. Drops it off at the point, but it's broken up by the walleye. And cleared back into the fuel end. And this should be and will be an icing as Kirill Chayka goes back to get the touch with 13.20 to go in the opening period of a game. The Fuel and Walleye are playing right now, seeking the first goal. Faceoff will be in the Toledo end after the icing. Doug Christensen will send the Jared Thomas line out with Mondot and Spencer Watson on either side. And the faceoff is controlled by Toledo. Up the near side comes T.J. Hensick, the National Hockey League veteran. And Jordan Schneider interrupts him and is able to bring it across the line. Here's a shot from along the left-wing wall by Jared Thomas that's on, turned aside by Christopoulos. Over along the left-wing wall, Mondot leaves it for Spencer Watson in the corner. Tried to get it to Jared Thomas behind the net, but it's broken up by Fraser. Comes up to the point and bounces over Laguerrier's stick as he tried to hold it in. He'll race back into his own zone to go get it. Fuel will get a change. 12.45 to go. Laguerrier sends it in behind the Toledo net. It's left for Adam Parcells by Christopoulos. All six foot six of Parcells. Starting the breakout up the far side. They head manned up through the neutral zone. And Steve Alexi, another guy with a lot of National Hockey League experience, brings it in, but does so offside. 12.27 to go in the opening period. The Fuel and Walleye are scoreless. Outdoors at Fifth Third Field, this is Indy Fuel Hockey. If you're looking for an exciting night of hockey, visit the Indiana Farmers Coliseum to help cheer our Indy Fuel to victory. If you're looking to score a great deal on business insurance, look no further than Indiana Farmers Insurance. The Indy Fuel chose Indiana Farmers Insurance because they wanted a local business that understands local business. It's a partnership that's truly worthy of a hat trick. To find an independent Indiana Farmers insurance agent near you, visit indianafarmers.com. Hi, this is Jeff Wheeler, business manager of IBW Local 41. I am proud to represent more than 3,000 union electrical workers in central Indiana. From Bankers Life Fieldhouse to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the annual Circle of Lights, we are proud to power your community. IBEW Local 41 is proud of our union membership and our community leadership. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. 12.27 to go in the opening period. The Indy Fuel and Toledo Walleye are scoreless at Winterfest 2021. As we return to action, the faceoff will be in the left wing circle in the Fuel's offensive zone. Carl Elmir to take it, but it's won by Toledo. Parcells sends it up the far boards and right wing pass through the neutral zone. It's scaled into the Fuel end. Craig Wismerski goes back to get it. Up the right wing boards to Elmir. The puck squirts out to the far wall where it's collected by Schneider. And tipped into the Toledo zone. Christopoulos will leave for his defense. Parcells outlets up the far side to Austin McElmurray. He'll wrist it in behind the fuel goal. Lackey sends it back from whence it came. Craighead chips it out to center. And it's wrapped into the zone on goal. And Christopoulos is forced to cover with 11.47 to go. Opening period. Toledo in the gold sweaters with light blue shoulders. Light blue and dark blue piping on the sleeves. Dark blue pants and gold socks with a couple of hooks on the logo. The fuel in their black sweaters with gray numbers trimmed in red and black pants and black socks. Fuel in the draw, wristed in behind the net. Griff Jessica goes after it along the right wing boards. 
Back behind the net looking for Craighead. He'll take it up the right wing boards. Look to center, but it's broken up by the walleye and sent back out to neutral ice. Collected there by Zulsdorf. He'll hammer it back in. It comes through both corners. Gazola has it shaken free from him. Comes back in behind the net to Lowney. He's able to outlet to Brandon Hawkins, who lobs it out to center. Texture at his own line. Wrist it right back through the neutral zone to Jared Thomas. Right down Main Street. Takes it to the backhand. Hooks a pass across looking for Malone, but it didn't connect, or Malone would have had a really good look from the left wing circle. The other way, the walleye come. Lowney zips a pass across to the far side. John Albert looks to center, but it's broken up by the fuel. Puck loose along the far wall and collected by Conlon Keenan. Albert gets it back, back diagonal feed. Lowney skates in left circle, shoots. Blocker save made by Lackey. Keenan holds the loose puck in along the right wing boards, but it's sent out by the fuel, and they'll sweep it into the Toledo end, but they'll do so from the wrong side of the red line. So we have an icing call with 10.41 to go in a scoreless first period. So we mentioned it's a tremendous atmosphere playing outdoors, really good crowd on hand. They had over 11,000 on Sunday night. Just to be a very similar one tonight here in Toledo. But these are a very important two points as well, especially for the Fuel who are looking to climb in the standings after a difficult start to the year. They've been playing really well since the start of December. Toledo wins a draw, but Chris Martin has it forced free at his own line. Seamus Malone on his horse into the Toledo zone, but Fraser is able to sweep it free from him. Puck loose at center and steered into the Fuel zone. Over to the far side, coming in on goal was Keenan, and it was turned aside. Here's a shot from the point, save made. Weak side rebound to Hensick, but a... Alert stick was able to prevent Hensick from doing anything with that with an open side. Spencer Watson fires high and wide, coming the other way. And it's held in by Zulstorff. to Watson. Turnaround shot just wide of Christopoulos' cage from the left wing circle. And the walleye ice it just to relieve the pressure. Been a lot of icings so far in this game. And the one thing, too, fire shots on goal because the goaltenders, the angles are a little bit different here than what they're used to. Shots are five apiece. We have no score. 9.57 to go. Offensive zone draw coming for the fuel. As Carl Almir was going to take it, but he's tossed out of the circle. So it'll be C.J. Ike to do the honors. Almir and Iverson, the other forwards on this line. Toledo wins the draw. Brett Bowling tries to steer it out through center, but it's knocked down by the fuel and played back into the right wing corner. Fraser sends it up the wall. Comes back behind the net to Chris Martinet. He'll turn and play it up the right wing boards, and they'll outlet it to center. Mitchell Hurd across the logo. Chips it into the fuel zone of the right wing corner, and Ryan Zulsdorf goes back to get it for Indy. He'll turn as Toledo was getting a change, and Steve Alexi in on the forecheck as the puck squirts to the walleye line. They try to steer it forward, but it's settled down by Texera and sent right back into the Toledo zone. Puck in the left wing corner, but it's collected by the walleye, and they'll look to take it through center with some speed. How to Shell's entry is batted down. Steve Alexi tried to turn, but it was knocked free from him. Parcel sends it back into the fuel zone of the right wing corner. Zulsdorf looks over the shoulder and sees a couple of walleye come and shoveled it a little further along, but Brady Tomlack takes it. The Fuel able to gain possession and lob it back to the Toledo line. Adam Parcells will go back to get it in his own zone. D to D feed across to Walters, and they'll feed it up the right wing boards into the Fuel zone. Pass a little bit too far. Chaika gets to it and sends it across to Seamus Malone, who will be our first intermission guest. McKay across to Craighead. Across the line, left wing side, feeds it across for McKay for a one-timer from the right wing circle, but Christopoulos comes across to make the left pad save. Riley McKay with the Fuel's best chance of the night. But we remain scoreless. Here come the walleye the other way. Nice curl and drag move, but it's canceled out by Jordan Schneider in front of his own net. And Schneider then goes behind the goal to get the puck. Sends it up the far wall. Jared Thomas, rink wide pass through the neutral zone to Watson across the line. Drops it off for Thomas. Left wing circle, shoots, and it's deflected over the net. And behind the goal, Thomas gets to it. Has to play it along the far wall looking for Wizomerski, but... And he's able to hold it in. Thomas, high slot, has it poked off of his stick very nicely. And Randy Gazzola with a solid defensive play 
clears the zone. The fuel fire it back in. They go for a change as Toledo will regroup back in its own zone. Mitchell Hurd along the left wing wall. Rinkway pass through the neutral zone. Coming up the far side for a shot right on goal is Brandon Hawkins and Michael Lackey makes the save. He holds on for a whistle. 7.33 to go in the opening period. Shots are six apiece, but none of them have found the back of the net so far. You're listening to Indy Fuel Hockey. During Happy Honda Days, discover the joys of the season with unforgettable trips in an Accord, Pilot, or HRV. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get 1.9% APR on the 2021 Honda Accord and 0% APR on the 2022 Pilot or HRV. Find your perfect Honda this season. Visit your local Honda dealer today or shop online. This is my kind of holiday. It's the Happy Honda Day sales event at your Central Indiana Honda dealers. See dealer for financing details. This is Dr. Ron Mialetti, Chief Physician Executive at Community Health Network. I know that for a lot of you, COVID-19 has changed your day-to-day lives in some pretty dramatic ways. But as things are progressing, there's one thing we sincerely hope you'll continue to do just as before, and that's to seek medical care when you need it. So please, focus on getting the care you need, and we'll focus on keeping you safe while you do. There's no safer place to be. Learn more at ecommunity.com. Stand by. Exceptional care, simply delivered. Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. 7.33 to go in the opening period at Fifth Third Field. Outdoors in Toledo, the Indy Fuel and Toledo Walleye are scoreless. Andrew Smith along with you. Glad you've joined us. Faceoff will be in the Fuel end when we return to play. Just waiting the signal from our off-ice officials to allow us to do so. And actually, Michael Lackey's having his helmet fixed. It's a little equipment issue for the fuel goaltender. Lackey spent the first couple months of the season on injured reserve, finally returned to action on Sunday against Fort Wayne, and then on Tuesday had a second career shutout, blanking Norfolk 4 to nothing. And so... Lackey is being attended to and having a little bit of a a delay until that is taken care of. And so our officials are over now, I think making sure that this isn't a delay tactic at all. And of course it's not, it's we had a timeout. Cameron Fleming is our referee this evening. Dan Kovacic and Zach Roberts are the linesmen. As Michael Lackey is still having his mask tended to. And got a little delay until that is taken care of and so Michael Lackey and Mitch Gillum the fuel goaltending tandem right now with both Tom Aubrun and also Cale Morris in Rockford and as we mentioned with Cale Morris he signed a contract a National Hockey League deal with the Chicago Blackhawks today he joins Colin Delia and Kevin Lankinen as well as Matt Tompkins as fuel goaltenders who have signed NHL contracts while members of the Indy Fuel or have played for the Fuel Matt Carruth also had an NHL contract, uh, the Fuels goaltender back in 2014-15. And Justin Hall, of course, as well. A mainstay on defense with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Back to action. The puck in the fuel zone along the right wing corner. It's shoveled in behind the net. Keone Teixeira goes back to get it. He takes a big hit, but is able to move the puck out to center. 
Iverson for Indy will wrist one on goal from neutral ice. Christopoulos has to cover up because Griff Jesko was coming in after Christopoulos made an easy save on a puck that was shot in on him. 7.08 to go, opening period. Fuel and Toledo scoreless. Seeing the return of Craig Wismerski to the lineup tonight after a year and a half away from pro hockey. He had retired, but has returned. He's out there now as the McKay, Malone, and Craighead line out for the fuel. Craighead tries to hold it in at the point after Toledo had cleared. He could not, and Steve Alexi collects for the walleye while the fuel tag up. Drops it off for the D. Ryan Lowney will scale it in. Lowney joined the walleye this week. This is his first game with them. He had been playing in Denmark to start the year. Former Fort Wayne Comet and Utah Grizzly. Puck chipped into the fuel zone. Here's a shot from along the right wing boards. It's blocked up and out of play. And so 6.38 to go in the first period of play. We are scoreless between the fuel and Toledo. Faceoff will come back into the Indy end. And the walleye will send out John Albert's line with Conlon Keenan and the always dangerous Brandon Hawkins. Faceoff controlled by Toledo. And the puck wristed into the slot, but intercepted by Spencer Watson. He'll send it to the Toledo line. Mondot tries to center, but it's blocked away from him. And Toledo's able to outlet it. Hawkins up the left wing boards in the neutral zone. Rink wide pass right to the logo for Albert. He stick handles to the left wing half wall. Tries to center, but it's broken up by Spencer Watson of the Indy. Puck flip through the neutral zone. Jan Mondot's able to force it free. He fires high on Christopoulos, who makes the save on the shot from inside of the right wing circle. And the walleye clear the puck. Icing is waved off as Chaika goes back to get it. Six minutes to go and a scoreless first. D to D pass to Jacob Laguerrier. He headmans to the Toledo line. And here's a pass back for a shot on goal off the stick of Jared Thomas. And Christopoulos makes a glove save and holds on. 5.51 to go in the opening period of play. The Indy Fuel and Toledo Walleye are scoreless. We'll take another timeout. You're listening to Indy Fuel Hockey. Midwest Sport and Spine is the official chiropractor of the Indy Fuel. Go where the fuel go for sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Midwest Sport and Spine offers state-of-the-art technology, chiropractic physical therapy, athletic training, and massage therapy all under one roof. And yes, we take your insurance. Take advantage of our Fuel Fan discount for a $59 introductory massage offer. Midwest Sport and Spine, sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Go to MidwestSportAndSpineCenter.com to schedule your appointment now. Remember Krista from Kemper Technology Consulting last year? What's icing? Well, she's learned a lot since then. Get him! Hit him again! Shoot! And she's become a huge fuel fan. Go, fuel! Let the team at Kemper put that same enthusiasm to work for you. Specializing in accounting software support with QuickBooks Professional Certification, Kemper gives you real people solving real problems. They can also help your network infrastructure, too. Call 866-966-5633 or visit KemperTC.com. Come on, rep! Idiot! Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Well, the officials were quick getting back to play, so we missed a few seconds of the action. But the Fuel went an offensive zone draw, said Darian Craighead up for a pretty good scoring chance at the bottom of the left wing circle, but Christopoulos was able to hold it out. So another offensive zone draw coming for the Fuel. Elmir wins it back to Teixeira at the left point and plays it along the far wall. Craighead back diagonal pass for Zulstor, fires on goal. Christopoulos with the save, and the puck comes out to center where Zulsdorf comes back to get it. Collected there by Brett Bowling of Toledo, but here come the fuel the other way. Bowling comes back to intercept the fuel's rush and steers it back out to center where it's collected by Seamus Malone, the alternate captain. And Indy will bring it in. Here's a feed, give and go with it, looking for a tip from Malone and he deflected it just high from the low slot. While I rim it around the far boards, but Settled down by Indy, but Toledo outlets. Rink wide pass to Alexi. Stick handles pass. Craig head into the zone. Takes a bump from Schneider that forces the puck free from him. And Jared Thomas goes back to get it for Indy. 
Sends it along the far wall, but it's picked off by McElmurray. Looks to center for Alexi, but it's broken up by the fuel. Sent back in behind the net. Wismerski will chip it along. Here's a centering feed out in front, looking for Brady Tomlack, but it's broken up by Indy, and they'll look for transition the other way. Wismerski across the lot. Feed, uh, centering pass for Thomas broken up, but he tracks it down to the left wing corner. Thomas working on two walleye in the left wing corner. Mondot comes over as well to win the puck, but it's swept away from him by Alexi and back into the fuel zone. Steve Alexi is a guy who's played 155 NHL games with the Capitals and Penguins, but he's transitioning positions, going from defense to forward. He'd been a defenseman up until this year. Now Spencer Watson brings it into the zone and fires on goal. Christopoulos makes a glove save and holds on. And Steve Alexi is one of two walleye players with more than 100 games of NHL experience. He's in his second year with the walleye since returning. He also played with Las Vegas and Idaho as well as Toledo prior to matriculating to the NHL in the early part of his career. If you'll win the draw, here's a shot from a sharp angle blocked in front. Carl Elmir along the left wing board. Sends it up to the point for a one-timer on goal save. Made a rebound. Trickles into the slot. Iverson feeds Elmir once, twice. And Christopoulos got it both. Iverson turned around shot. Save. Rebound. Score! Carl Elmir hops on a rebound right in front. And the fuel lead at one to nothing. Some good work by Elmir, Iverson, and Ike to keep the play alive and create chaos in front of the net. And Carl Elmir... Hops on the rebound and punches it past Christopoulos to give the fuel the lead. Keegan Iverson retrieving the puck. Fed Elmir. He took a shot. The save was made. And then Iverson again retrieved it. Fed Elmir at the left side of the cage. And he was able to beat Christopoulos to the spot. Time to go 16.08 of the first period. Carl Elmir with his fifth goal of the season. His first with the fuel. And Indy has that all-important first goal and leads one to nothing. Now the fuel bring it back into the zone. Seamus Mullen trying to stick handle down the slot, but it's picked off by Hurd. Hensick the other way. Feeds for a shot from Walters. It's fought off by Lackey. And now we've got some pushing and shoving behind the play as TJ Hensick and no surprise Riley McKay are involved. I will take taking T.J. Hensick off the ice for any period of time. And so T.J. Hensick and just about anybody's a trade the fuel will take. Elmir from Iverson and Ike is the scoring on the goal. 16.08 the time. And really, the guy who made that happen was Keegan Iverson twice winning pucks in the slot the first time he set up Elmir for a shot and Christopoulos made a really good save on it the second time Elmir was able to beat Christopoulos to the spot and score one nothing fuel 327 to go face off will be at neutral ice because of the fact that there was some fisticuffs and pushing and shoving And if the defensemen come below the hash marks, it's always a neutral zone faceoff. Craighead sends it across. It's batted to the Toledo line, set right back into the fuel zone. Ryan Zulsdorf ties up his man. Keone Texera gets the puck. Rims it around to the near boards where Malone tries to send it up, but Martinet holds it in, sends it in down low for Hensick, and he banks one in from below the goal line. So a quick response from Toledo, and that's the second game in a row where the Fuel have given up kind of a fluky goal. Good work by the Walleye. And they set up TJ Hensick below the goal line. Chris Martin had held it in, and Hensick banked it in. He got it from below the goal line and just an impossible angle. I'm not sure how he was able to get that past Lackey from the end boards. There was not a whole lot of room, but he was able to find the opening. And T.J. Hensick, the league's leading scorer, Potts is 16th of the year. 
So we're back to even. 52 seconds after the fuel had taken the lead. Martinet and Fraser with the assists. And so the walleye sent it into the slot and Tomlack has the stick tied up but is able to collect the puck, send it up to the point for Gazzola. He fakes one, takes the shot and scores. Two goals, 34 seconds apart, and the Fuel now trail at 2-1. to one. Randy Gazzola was able to skip this one through, and that's kind of why we say get pucks to the net because the angles and the sight lines are different for the goalies. Brady Tomlack won a puck. Gazzola took a slap shot, or faked the slap shot, took a wrister, and it just looked like Lackey didn't pick it up. And it may have changed direction on the way in, but but it just looked like Lackey never picked that up through traffic, and it's weaked through him. And so the fuel, after taking a lead, surrender it and give up two goals in 34 seconds. Tom Lack and Howdeshell with the assist. Here's a shot from the point for the fuel, and it's gloved down by Christopoulos. So a lot of scoring happening really quickly, and, you know, that puck did hit something on the way in. I think, I think it deflected off of Jared Thomas's stick. And so just a couple of unfortunate bounces for the fuel. T.J. Hensick banks one in off the goalie, and then... Randy Gazzola, a seeing eye shot that deflects in. Here's a shot from Chaika on goal, and Christopoulos with the save. Elmir tracks the puck down to the right wing corner. Tries to play it up to the point, but it's intercepted by Toledo. They got numbers across the line. Albert, three on two, over to Hawkins, right wing. Sends it in front, looking for a tip, and Lackey makes the save and holds on. So now Toledo with a push after the fuel took the lead. And Toledo, two quick goals and have continued to have the foot on the accelerator since. Mitchell Hurd to take the draw for Toledo against Griff Jeska for the fuel. Griff has two goals in the three games since returning to Indy. He was in the fuel's training camp earlier this year. And... We have the timekeeper signaling the officials. I think there was a false start of the clock, and they've got to reset it, and they have to a net 45. And the walleye win the offensive zone draw. Rister wide from the right point. Hensick tracks it down along the left wing boards. A little further along for Mitchell Hearn. He'll cycle it in behind the net looking for Brett Boeing. And Jessica gets to it, steers it up the far wall. It's just up in the air and finally collected by the fuel. Jessica's able to outlet to Craighead. Rink wide pass through the neutral zone to Malone. Across the line. Left wing circle. Curl, drag, shoot, save made. Rebound loose in the slot. Craighead tried to get a stick on it, but ended up fouling it off and it was cleared by Toledo. Fuel regroup. Send it into the zone as Indy goes and gets a change. Jan Mondot in on the forecheck as Parcells goes back to get the puck. Rims it around the far boards up to center and back into the fuel zone where Wismerski will go back to get it. One minute remaining. The far side, Mondot, cross-corner dump into the right-wing corner. Spencer Watson going after it. It's rimmed around by the walleye, and they play it out to center. Wismerski goes back to get it in his own zone, chips it off the glass out to center, where it's collected by Spencer Watson to Mondot. Back to Watson, feet across his shot, deflected on goal. Christopoulos with the save. Mondot was hunting the rebound, but couldn't quite get to it. Alexi, rink-wide pass through the neutral zone with half a minute to play to Gazzola. He stops along the far boards, tied up, and steered out to center by the fuel. Spencer Watson up the left wing boards, across the line, into the high slot, shoots high on Christopoulos, who makes a glove save and holds on with 18.1 seconds to go. In the first period, the fuel trailing 2-1. to one. Our first intermission guest will be one of the alternate captains for the fuel, Seamus Malone. We'll hear from him. 
after 18.1 seconds of clock time. We'll also with a recap of this first period and let you know what else is going on in the league. Face off one by Toledo, chipped off the glass and out to center. Kirill Chaika goes back to get it. D to D to Laguerrier. He'll wind it in from center red. And Seamus Mullen hops on it, right wing corner. Trying to steer it up the boards. Held in by Chaika, right point. Rister through traffic, deflected wide. And that's how the first period will end. Carl Elmir got the fuel on the board. But 52 seconds later, TJ Hensick answered. And then Randy Gazzola, 34 seconds after that, gave the walleye the lead. The fuel outshot the walleye 16 to 10 in that opening period. But the walleye, just a couple of fortunate bounces. And they were able to turn them into goals and take a 2-1 to one lead over the Indy Fuel. There were no power plays in the first period. And as we mentioned, shot 16-10 to 10 in favor of the Fuel. Those are our first intermission stats. They are sponsored by the Midwest Sport and Spine Clinic. Midwest Sport and Spine is the official chiropractor of your Indy Fuel. We'll take a break. Our first intermission show comes up after this. You're listening to Indy Fuel Hockey. Midwest Sport and Spine is the official chiropractor of the Indy Fuel. Go where the fuel go for sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Midwest Sport and Spine offers state-of-the-art technology, chiropractic physical therapy, athletic training, and massage therapy all under one roof. And yes, we take your insurance. Take advantage of our fuel fan discount for a $59 introductory massage offer. Midwest Sport and Spine, sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Go to MidwestSportAndSpineCenter.com to schedule your appointment now. This is Dr. Ron Mulletti, Chief Physician Executive at Community Health Network. I know that for a lot of you, COVID-19 has changed your day-to-day lives in some pretty dramatic ways. But as things are progressing, there's one thing we sincerely hope you'll continue to do just as before, and that's to seek medical care when you need it. So please, focus on getting the care you need, and we'll focus on keeping you safe while you do. There's no safer place to be. Learn more at ecommunity.com. Exceptional care, simply delivered. Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. First intermission at Fifth Third Field in Toledo. The Indy Fuel trailing the Toledo Walleye 2-1. to one. All of the scoring happened in the final four minutes of the period. Carl Elmir, his fifth of the year and first with the Fuel on a rebound from Keegan Iverson and C.J. Ike. And it was really a couple of plays by Keegan Iverson to win the puck in the slot in between the hash marks. And he set up... Elmir once, Christopoulos made the save, rebound came back out into the slot, Iverson again wanted it away from a couple of walleye, fed it back to Elmir at the side of the cage, he was able that time to beat Christopoulos to the spot for the goal, his fifth of the year, but just 52 seconds later, TJ Hensick banked one in off of Michael Lackey from below the goal line, and Hensick, his 16th of the year, from Chris Martinet and Cole Fraser tied the game at one and then Randy Gazzola after Brady Tomlack won a puck in the high slot fed it back up top to Gazzola and he just fired a seeing eye wrister through the traffic and it looks like it deflected off of Jared Thomas's stick or body into the net and just fouled up Lackey right at the last second and so Toledo with an early 2-1 lead despite the fuel really outplaying the walleye for a good chunk of that period. And out shooting them 16 to 10. There were no power plays, as we mentioned, in the opening period. So Indy will have to regroup a little bit. The Fuel, when trailing after one, are 1-8-1 one, and one this year. The Walleye, when leading after one, are 9-1-0. Oh. Let's take a quick spin around the league scoreboard. Lots of action as everybody in the league but one team playing tonight 13 games across the league a few matinees orlando beat south carolina five to four in overtime and luke boca's goal and boca tied it up as well as the solar bears rallied from two down in the final six minutes of the third period to tie it and then win it in overtime redding shut out worcester two to nothing and that's another game gone final. Through two periods, Adirondack and Newfoundland are tied at two. 
Also in the second intermission, Trois Rivières leads Maine three to two. First intermission, Tulsa and Kalamazoo are tied at one. Also first intermission, Greenville and Cincinnati tied at one. Late in the first, Norfolk has a one to nothing lead over Wheeling. Games taking place later on. Idaho and Allen will face off at the top of the hour. Florida and Atlanta will face off at 7.30. At 8 o'clock, Fort Wayne will host Iowa in the other game involving division teams. Also, another 8 o'clock face-off in Kansas City as the Mavericks will host Wichita and Rapid City hosts Utah. That'll be a 9.05 p.m. face-off. So let's look around at the ECHL. The Rockford Icehawks were supposed to be in action tonight in Chicago against the Wolves, a home-and-home with them, but that was canceled due to COVID protocols and health and safety protocols in the American Hockey League. Two games have gone final in the NHL. The Devils won a wild one, 6-5 to five over the Oilers. Jack Hughes with the winner at 255 of overtime. He had a pair of goals in that contest. The Oilers saw Connor McDavid score numbers 18 and 19, and Kyler Yamamoto also scored twice for Edmonton. Golden Knights beat the Ducks 3-1 to one this afternoon. A couple of games facing off a little bit later. The Rangers and the Lightning at the top of the hour and the Capitals and Red Wings at 7.30. And of course the Blackhawks back in action tomorrow 2 o'clock. They'll take on the Nashville Predators. Tomorrow's a full day of action in the National Hockey League that involves and includes the Winter Classic between the Blues and the Wild. That game will face off at 7 o'clock tomorrow night from Target Field in Minneapolis-St. Paul. So that's a look at what else is going on around the hockey world here. The Indy Fuel trailing the Toledo Walleye 2-1. to one. Earlier today, we had a chat to chat with Indy Fuel alternate captain Seamus Malone. And here is that conversation. Our first intermission guest, Fuel Forward Seamus Malone. Our first intermission guest tonight during Winterfest in Toledo is Indy Fuel forward and alternate captain Seamus Malone. And Seamus, first of all, how special is it for you and your teammates to have the opportunity to play in an outdoor game and kind of get to enjoy this uh, this spectacle and the, this opportunity here? Oh uh, yeah, I mean it's incredible for uh, most of us. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I think only a handful of guys have played in them. Um, yeah, it's super cool. Um, the pictures from last week look really cool, and uh, we're excited to get out there and, and compete. Well, and I know you've just missed playing in a, a couple, maybe with the Badgers. I think they played a couple of outdoor games right before you got to Wisconsin. So is this really just a neat opportunity for you? Yeah, super cool. I know, yeah, they, it was. I did miss it um, just barely, but um, – we got to play at the United Center and stuff, which was also cool. But, uh, yeah, never played an outdoor game. I'm really excited. Uh, see, how, see how the weather fares. Hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully the ice is good. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited. You come into this game with a four-game scoring streak going. You had a shorthanded goal on Wednesday night against Norfolk. Uh, what's been really clicking for you here recently? Um, I'm just trying to keep it simple. Um, try to stick to my game. You know, just kind of – work hard and, uh, and and find my spots and take advantage of my opportunities. How good has it been this year to largely be healthy after you had to deal with a lot of injuries last year? It just kind of felt like last season you never could catch a break. When you'd recover from one, you'd get uh, you'd end up uh, having to miss a, a lot again. How nice has it been to be back in the lineup and be able to play a lot this season? Yeah, I really uh, made that enough to us this year to make sure I'm, I'm keeping my body healthy and doing whatever I can to uh to make sure I do do stay in the lineup for as many games as I can. And, um, yeah, it's been it's been good so far, knock on wood. But, um, yeah, it's going good. I just got to keep it going and keep focusing on taking care of my body and just, just keep playing hard. How hard was it last year to miss as much as you did? Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's never fun sitting out, especially when you, when you have two injuries like I did last year that uh, you're out for an extended period of time. So um, and it feels really good this year to just be a part of it, being be in the lineup every night and, and being with my teammates on the bench rather than, than in the stands watching. What does it mean to you to wear the A on your chest and be chosen by your teammates to, to wear a letter? Uh, it really is an honor. 
Um, I've worn I've worn a couple of A's in the past, but um, it's the first one pro hockey, so it's uh it, it feels good. I, I, I take advantage of the opportunity and and be the leader that I know I am. Uh, describe that role that you have as the net front presence in the power play. You've scored six goals this year. Five of them have come on the power play, and you had a shorty against Norfolk. Almost had another as well uh, with the post. But uh, describe that role that you have on the power play and and how you've been able to be successful there. Oh uh, yeah, I mean this is this first year I've actually played net front and uh, not the biggest body, but you know I I, I just need to take take away the goalie's eyes, and I think I have a uh, good stick stick skills to to tip pucks and and get rebounds in tight and and bury them home so it's been working out and so hopefully we uh bounce back from our last game and and come out and bury our power play opportunities like we know we can well you look at the talent in that group that you're out there with with jared thomas and when he's here mike lee and uh, and craighead as well and uh and now you move keone to that uh, quarterback position how nice is it to be part of such a skilled unit that uh, that can really make things not easy for you, but uh, allow you to play that role in front? Oh yeah, it makes it it makes it way easier when when pucks are coming my way, when uh, when they're making plays, moving the puck, and when you have five guys that that can all can all create opportunities and create offense, it uh, it makes it easy. This is your third year as a pro. Uh, how much has your game grown in each year that you've been professional? Oh yeah, I, I think it's I think it's been growing a lot. I mean, last year, like we talked about, is was a tough year, but I think uh, those are lessons that I've learned, and um, I think every year that I've been improving, and even now, I, I still think I'm improving, even from the start of the year this year. So, just gotta keep moving upwards, and um, yeah, just keep progressing. Uh, you came into. Uh, you you came in obviously after a four year career at Wisconsin. How did that prepare you for your professional career, and how much pride did you take in really helping turn around that program at Wisconsin and get them back onto a winning uh, a winning track? Yeah, I mean, it, it started with started with a great group of guys, obviously in the locker room that that helped turn that turn that program as it's still it's still turning around here. But um, it's great coaches Tony Granado, Marcus Siki, Don Granado, all great guys, Mark Strobel. Great, great, um, great coaching staff. So yeah, it, it meant a lot. I mean, it's it's really good to see them doing well now. And then you go back a little bit further. You had a chance to win a Clark Cup uh, with with Dubuque as a junior. Uh, how special was that? Especially the quality of that league is tremendous. But uh, how special was it to to have the opportunity to win a championship? And how has that helped you throughout your career as you kind of get back into a situation where you've got a long playoff grind potentially ahead? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was my first year junior, so I was uh, 16 going into that. So uh, I always say that I, I grew up really fast. You learn a lot in juniors, and you learn from the older guys. And especially that year, you you I learned how to win because uh, we had we had a great leadership group, and and they kind of carried us along. And obviously, we we won the Clark Cup, so they uh, they kind of paved the way and and taught me some lessons along the way. A native of the Chicago area, how did you get into playing hockey? Uh, actually, my sister is a was professional figure skater, if not close to it. She was really good, and uh, I was always in the rink, but I ne- never wanted to watch her. I wanted to go on the other side of the rink and uh, and watch the hockey players. So that's how I kind of got into it. How much is the influence of the Blackhawks, especially? And I know you had really begun to transition into your junior career right when the Blackhawks Stanley Cup runs began, but. Uh, how much has that really changed the hockey scene in the Chicago area, especially the success they've had the last 10, 15 years? Oh yeah, I mean it's it's crazy that that cup run that they had, those three cups, is it's it's grown immensely. I mean, even just my friends in high school even started paying attention to hockey a little more. Like it's it's, it's grown a lot more, and I think I think the Blackhawks definitely have a lot to do with that. What has been your favorite thing about being an in indie so far? I mean, it's just. We have a great group of guys, and 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 what we have in India is a great setup, and and we all we all get along, and just just I just miss being around the boys. I mean, that's that's what everyone misses in the summer. It's just the guys in the locker room, really. Well, and you look at that and this group of guys you've had, whether it's been Indy or in college or junior or wherever. What's been a favorite moment or a favorite memory from your uh, your hockey career? 
I mean, I got to go back to that Clark Cup. Uh, I mean, there's nothing like winning a championship. So that is, that's ingrained in me, and I, I really can't forget that moment. Yeah, that was such a, such a good team that you had, too, in Dubuque. And at, at any level, whether it be college, pro, junior, what's been your favorite road city and your favorite road rink to play in? Ooh, it's a tough one. Um, I think Yost Arena, Michigan, was always a really fun place to play. Um, and I think, well, actually, my all-time my all-time favorite is probably North Dakota. I think that that building is just beautiful and uh, it's packed, even in warm-ups. And it's just a it's just an atmosphere that you you won't really see anywhere else. So you mentioned playing in the Big Ten, where you've got Yost, you've got. Uh great fans in Wisconsin at the Kohl Center and uh, and it really all the different rinks in the Big Ten. Then you get the opportunity to play at places like North Dakota. What is that like as a player to have that college atmosphere and play in front of packed rinks? I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's incredible. It's, I mean, that's, that's why we play. We play, play to have those experiences. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's really cool. It's really cool to be able to travel to different places and play in a bunch of different arenas and a bunch of a bunch of different fans, a bunch of different cities. Yeah, it's 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 been great. It's been a great ride. What are your goals for the rest of the year? Uh, we want to get back to the playoff team that we know we are and um, push towards that and push to win a championship. I think that's everyone's goal. But um, obviously, that starts with winning hockey games and stringing them along. So, gotta start start today or start Friday tomorrow in the outdoor game. Well, Seamus, thank you so much for your time, and good luck uh, this evening against Toledo and, and throughout the year as well. well thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Likewise. That's Indy Fuel forward Seamus Malone. We'll be back with second period action right after this. When you get care at Community Health Network, you're part of our community. And in our community, nothing should get between you and your health, not even the cost of care. When the time comes, our advocacy team will help you figure it out, whether you're uninsured or underinsured so you can focus on what really matters, your health. Community Health Network, exceptional care, simply delivered. Get support at ecommunity.com slash simply delivered. Stand by me. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Getting ready to begin the second period in Toledo, outdoors at Fifth Third Field. The Indy Fuel trailing the Toledo Walleye 2-1. to one. Carl Elmir got the scoring started for the Fuel, but it was answered 52 seconds later by T.J. Hensick and then Randy Gazzola 34 seconds after that. So three goals just a minute and 26 seconds apart. One by the Fuel, two by the Walleye. And we currently sit Indy looking to climb out of a 2-1 to hole. And good to see the Elmir Iverson Ike group get going. That's really your, your checking line. And a lot of times, those are the guys that you expect to grind out shifts, get some things going. But it's your hard work line. And when those guys are fighting the back of the net, that's a really good thing because obviously they're getting rewarded for the work they're doing. And they, and, and it was a hard work goal. Keegan Iverson winning a couple of pucks in the slot and allowing Carl Elmir to get loose at the side of the net and score. And so we'll flip ins for the second period. Michael Lackey will head to the goal to our left. Billy Christopoulos to our right. Flip those ends if you're watching on Flow Hockey. As the camera position is opposite from our booth, the the camera is essentially behind the benches on the far side of the ice and so the fuel really outplayed Toledo for good stretches of that first period they outshot him 16 to 10 and a lot of chances both ways and again these are a big two points for both teams as Toledo leads the division but they're just one point ahead of both Fort Wayne and Cincinnati and the Fuel right now, they're seven points out of a playoff spot and would love to inch a little bit closer to a fourth place Wheeling, which currently sits with 29 points, the Fuel with 22. 
on the season. The two teams back on the ice, the Walleye in their gold uniforms and the Fuel in their black sweaters. And generally, the home team wears the lighter colored uniform during the second half of the season. But this being a special event, Toledo wore dark navy uniforms on Sunday against Kalamazoo and then has opted for their gold alternates for this game. minutes are on the board. Jared Thomas, Jan Mondot, Spencer Watson out for the fuel and they will be opposed by Keenan, Albert, and Hawkins for Toledo. The puck is down and away we go in the second period. And the fuel will play it into the Toledo zone but coming back to get it is Albert. He'll send it in behind the net and Mondot able to send it to an open side where Keenan gets to it and tried to fire one. It was blocked wide. A fuel outlet pass, however, knocked down by Toledo. Albert sends it over to the left point. Puck wristed in behind the net, and it's collected by Teixeira. He plays it over off the right wing wall and chips it back into the Toledo zone. Randy Cazola will go back to get it for the walleye. Sends it around to John Albert, one of their four veterans. Albert, Alexi, Hurt, and Hensick all had 260-plus games of pro experience. You're allowed four vets, and that is their complement, all forwards. Here's a move. Gazola right down Main Street, fires after a nice curl and drag move to get past a check and a positional pad save made by Lackey in the butterfly. Hensick has the puck knocked away from him, but Chaika turns it back over. Back diagonal feed. Fraser spins, fires, blocked in front. Turnaround shot. Hawkins shovels it wide, and Kirill Chaika. Collects the loose puck. Outlets to Sheamus Malone. Up the left wing boards. He'll skate it out to center. Rink wide pass to Craig Head across the line. McKay. He turns and fires a tricky shot on Christopoulos, who sprawled to make a glove save. And hold on. 18.39 to go in the second period of the game. The Fuel trail 2-1. to one. And that's where you say just fire the puck on goal. And Riley McKay. Took a shot that appeared to fool Christopoulos a little bit, but he was able to make the save. The Elmira line is out against Hurd, Boeing, and Hensick for Toledo, their top scoring line. And Dan Watson being the home coach gets to make the last change and thus decide which players are on the ice. They get the matchups he likes while I play it through center. Wismerski pokes it away, and it's shoveled out to neutral ice by Schneider. Coming back to get the puck is Cole Fraser for Toledo. Advance through the neutral zone, but it's knocked into the Toledo bench by Craig Wismerski. And we have a whistle in neutral zone faceoff with a minute 36 gone in period number two. The Fuel will be back home Sunday, the first family fun day of the year as they face the Iowa Heartlanders. It'll be the second visit by the Heartlanders to the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. That's a 3 o'clock face-off at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. And then Friday night, Indiana Farmers and Friends Night is the Wheeling Nailers visit for a 7 o'clock face-off. Love to see you there. Here's a turnaround shot on goal. Christopoulos makes the save. Rebound put toward the goal by Jessica, but it was blocked back to him. Iverson fires from a sharp angle, and it's fought off again. Good work again by this line. Puck squirts free. And Alexi steers it out to center where Wizomirski settles it down for Indy. Elmer turns and fires it in. It takes a bit of a crazy carom, but Christopoulos is able to collect it before it came into the crease as Christopoulos had gone behind the net to take the puck. Here's a feed in front. Tomlack sends it up for a shot and a goal. Keegan Howdeshell gives Toledo a 3-1 to lead. Brady Tomlack just gained the zone. Down the slot, dropped it off for Howdeshell, and he fired from the top of the left wing circle. And the fuel needs to climb out of a two goal deficit. Just a good quick passing play. Howdeshell collected the pass, took the shot top of the circle, and beat Lackey clean on the stick side. Brady Tomlack's second assist of the game, and Keegan Howdeshell's fourth goal of the season. 
So a rush chance for Toledo turns into a goal, and now the Fuel have some work to do. After scoring the first goal of the game, they've surrendered the next three and now have a two-goal deficit against a team that does not give up a lot of goals. Toledo on the year ranks fifth in the league, just 2.63 goals against. There's Jared Thomas the other way. Left circle, puts on the brakes as he's forced wide by Louning. Takes to the forehead. Centers for a shot from Zulsdorf. That is turned aside by Christopoulos. Poke check and center after the walleye cleared by Malone, but the walleye get the next touch and lob it in. Texera, headman through the neutral zone. The fuel would have had a two on none had Craig had been able to handle it cleanly. Looks to center for McKay, but it didn't connect. Hensick wants transition the other way. He takes it to the left point in the fuel zone. Wrists one wide. Mitchell Hurd gets to it in the right wing corner. Sends it up to the point for Fraser, who fires one wide of the left post from the right point. Held in by Hurd at the line. Drops it off for the D. Martinet a little further along into the left wing corner. Centering pass right through the crease looking for Conlon Keenan. And Riley McKay ties him up. Puck comes in behind the net. Crowd likes the hits from Keenan and McRae. Here's a turnaround shot from Boeing on goal. And the save is made by Lackey, another shot, a one-timer as they set Hurd up in the slot, but he fouled it off, and it was blocked wide. Boeing up to the point, Fraser over to the left point. Now Fraser, or make that uh, Boeing gets it back into the left-wing corner. We have a whistle and a penalty. Elbowing is signaled. And looks like the fuel are going to be headed to the power play as Brett Boeing will sit. This is an important power play here for the Fuel as Boeing got the elbow up on Laguerre going into the corner. So the first power play for either team in this game. Indy on the power play, seventh in the league at 23.2%. Toledo on the penalty kill is really good. They've allowed just nine power play goals all season on 69 attempts, that's second in the league at 87%. Fuel win the draw, Craighead drops it off for Teixeira right point. Across Mondot, skates in left circle, shoots high and wide on the glove side, and the rebound trickles all the way out to neutral ice. Mondot at center, drops it off for Teixeira, he'll wind it up. Drops it on the delay play to Thomas, through the neutral zone with speed, across to Craighead, gains the line, top of the right wing circle. Wrists it in through both corners to Seamus Malone along the left half wall. He drops it for Thomas into the high slot. Drop pass for Teixeira, left point, skates in along the half wall, zips it back to Thomas, top of the right circle. High slot, Mondot shoots, blocked in front. Teixeira collects the rebound along the left wing boards. He'll bring it out to the point. Across Thomas, right wing circle. Thomas back up to the point, Teixeira across to Mondot. Skates in left circle, zips it across for Thomas. Catch, release, and miss the net. Mondot collects along the left wing boards into the corner. Mondot gets it back from Craighead, but the pass was errant and goes all the way down. 55 seconds to go on the Fuel's power play. 14.52 to go in the uh, second period. The Fuel trail 3-1. to one. Riley McKay will bring it up. Craighead collects along the near boards, but he has it forced free by Hurd. Here's a shorthanded two-on-one for Toledo. Hurd across for a shot. Save, rebound, score. John Albert. Hopped on the rebound, a shorthanded goal, and now the fuel down four to one. Now the fuel had full possession in the zone. An errant pass forced them to regroup, and then Craighead had it forced free by Hurd. A beautiful pass across. Albert took the initial shot. Lackey made the save, but couldn't corral it, and Albert just stuck with it and scored his 13th of the year and the fuel right now in a world of hurt trailing four to one. And after Indy scored the first goal of this game, things caved in on him pretty quickly. Two goals, 34 seconds apart. And then how to shell had an early goal here in the second period. And then Albert with a shorthanded goal and so that was an important power play for the Fuel. 
That's absolutely what you didn't want is to give one up. And now, instead of having a chance to cut the deficit to one, now you're down three. Elmere up to the point for a shot. And it was blocked off the stick of Spencer Watson. Cleared back out to center. Laguerre goes back to get it. Quick re-entry to McKay. Right wing circle. Drops it off looking for Jessica. Broken up by the walleye. And Brandon Hawkins wants to transition the other way. Here is Boeing out of the box. Shoots. And it's just wide of the post. Puck in the left wing corner. Boeing fires one on goal from a sharp angle. Save is made. And here's a feed up through the neutral zone. Broken up by the walleye. Now they can really sit back and try to keep the play in front of them as Craig Wismerski chips it out to center, but it's fired back in by Toledo. Seamus Mullen goes back to get it behind his own goal. 13 and a half to go in the second period. The fuel trailing 4-1. to one. Wismerski across the line to Ike. He wrists one behind the net. Wismerski with it in the right wing corner, sweeps it further along, but it's picked off by Hensick and sent out to center. Settled down there by Seamus Mullen. He'll fire it back in through both corners. Out to the point. Shot on goal. Christopoulos makes the save. Ike battling for the rebound, but Christopoulos covers up. 13.05 to go. Second period. The Fuel Trail 4-1 here at Walleye Winterfest. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. If you're looking for an exciting night of hockey, visit the Indiana Farmers Coliseum to help cheer our Indy Fuel to victory. If you're looking to score a great deal on business insurance, look no further than Indiana Farmers Insurance. The Indy Fuel chose Indiana Farmers Insurance because they wanted a local business that understands local business. It's a partnership that's truly worthy of a hat trick. To find an independent Indiana Farmers Insurance agent near you, visit indianafarmers.com. During Happy Honda Days, discover the joys of the season with unforgettable trips in an Accord, Pilot, or HRV. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get 1.9% APR on the 2021 Honda Accord and 0% APR on the 2022 Pilot or HRV. Find your perfect Honda this season. Visit your local Honda dealer today or shop online. This is my kind of holiday. It's the Happy Honda Day sales event at your Central Indiana Honda dealers. See dealer for financing details. Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Keegan Howdeshell scores his fourth of the year at 220 from Tom Lack and Parcells. John Albert adds a shorthanded goal at 526, his 13th from Hurd. And Toledo leads the Fuel 4-1. to one. That was Toledo's third shorthanded goal of the season. And it was the fourth the Fuel have allowed. We're back to action. Puck in the right wing corner in the Toledo zone after the fuel controlled off the draw. Spencer Watson battling Chris Martinet. The fuel went it back up to the point. Schneider steps into one and Arister on goal. Christopoulos makes the save. And Toledo tries to get it up to the point. Held in by Schneider. Into the high slot. Mondot over to the far side. A backdoor feed for Spencer Watson. And he had his stick lifted just as he was trying to get a shot off with an open net and couldn't get it on. Martinet plays it up the far boards. Howdeshell chips it out to center. Another golden scoring chance for the Fuel, but a good defensive play by Toledo. And now the Fuel send it in on Christopoulos. He'll leave it for Martinet. And the walleye play it up. Keegan Howdeshell tied up along the far boards by Iverson. Puck squirts out to the point. Teixeira pinches down to keep it in, but the walleye able to send it back to the Fuel line. Keone Teixeira will settle it down. Go D to D to Zulsdorf. Head man to the Toledo line. Fraser is able to Leave it for Tom Lack. C.J. Ike in on the four check, but Fraser is able to elude him and send it through center. And ice the puck. So the faceoff will come back in the Toledo end with 11.55 to go. Second period, the fuel trailing 4-1. to one. Indy had the first goal of the game from Carl Elmer, but two quick goals, 34 seconds apart late in the first. And then two goals... Two minutes or three minutes and six seconds apart early in the second. The Fuel have 22 shots on goal in this game, but have only beaten Christopoulos once. And the Walleye win the draw and they ice the puck again with 11.48 to go in period number two. Four to one. This is meeting number four of ten between these two teams. Their next will be January 28th at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. The Walleye will make visits to Indy in back-to-back weeks. Right at the end of January, start of February. 
And you can see why this is a team that is in first place in the division. Fuel control off the draw. Puck along the far boards. Played out to center. Keegan Howdeschel sends it into the fuel zone. Zulsdorf goes back to get it with Hawkins in on the forecheck. It's rimmed around, and McKay leaves it for Malone, but it's broken up really nicely by Keenan, and Malone tried to get it back. The fuel finally do settle it down, and Seamus Malone tried to play it across, but nobody was home. An open wing in your defensive zone. The fuel will turn it over. Shot from Howdeschel on goal, and a pad save made by Lackey. So some anxious moments after an errant pass in their own zone. But Michael Lackey equal to the task. Walleye send it in. And Zulsdorf goes back to get it. He'll hammer it around the near boards. Riley McKay with Toledo in the midst of a change. Right in front of the bench is able to chip it out to center. But Gazzola gloves it down. Zips it across to his D partner, Ryan Lowney. And Lowney, who played his junior hockey not terribly far from here the other side of the state Youngstown Northern Ohio here's a puck force free Watson left circle shoots and a block by Lowney forces it high a sliding block by Ryan Lowney and played for the Youngstown Phantoms of the United States Hockey League and and went on to play his college hockey as well at Ferris State before three seasons with Fort Wayne and one with Utah and the fuel will try to send it into the zone, but it's deflected into the bench with 10.08 to go. And period number two. Game the fuel trail four to one. The second night of Walleye Winterfest. It's the fourth ever outdoor game in ECHL history. All four have been played right here at Fifth Third Field. Toledo fell to Kalamazoo three to two in a shootout on Sunday. Face off at the center ice dot. And it's controlled by Toledo. Dane Walters. Connor Walters. Dane, Dane Walters had played for the Walleye in the past. A, a long memory there, but it's Connor Walters with the puck taking it from Parcells. Headman's up the right wing boards into the fuel zone. Legarier goes back to get it for Indy. It's forced free from him. Steers it up the wall looking for Elmir. But Hurd forces it free. Feeds Boeing in the slot. And a blocker save is made on his shot by Lackey. Elmir can't get it out. Held in at the point. Sent all the way across the ice to an open wing where Legarier chips it out to center. Looking for Carl Elmir. Squirts it forward to uh, C.J. Ike. He and Iverson were having some difficulty handling the puck. And the walleye spray it out, but it's picked off by the fuel. Craig had across the line with Elmir tagging up to stay on side. Elmir tried to shove it back to Craighead. It comes all the way across to the far boards, and Schneider wrists one wide from the boards. Held in at the right point by the fuel. Sent in behind the net where Adam Parcells goes to get it for Toledo. And he'll send it out to neutral X. Wizemurski will collect. Go D to D to Schneider. And he head mans into the Toledo zone looking for Malone, but the pass didn't connect. And is thus an icing with 8.57 to go in the second period. Really crisp night in Toledo. Beautiful night. I said this ballpark has a lot of victory field in it. And just like victory field, there's kind of a good view of the Toledo skyline from beyond the outfield fence. More beyond the left field fence here, whereas at victory field, it's more oriented behind center field. Faceoff will be back in the fuel zone. They've got some older buildings that they've incorporated into the ballpark in the right field corner as well. Austin McElmurray takes the draw, but it's won by the fuel. Riley McKay skates it up. Two on two across the line. Feeds over to the far side for Craighead. He wrists one wide. McKay battling for the puck in the near corner. McElmurray steers it up. Seamus Wallen stops it. Sends it up to the point for Schneider. He wrists one on goal. Save made a rebound. Tumbles into the slot, but it's cleared by the walleye back into the fuel zone. Schneider settles down a spinning puck with Alexi in on the forecheck. Is up through center. And now Riley McKay and Cole Frazier 
have the gloves off. Frazier tries to get it a couple of roundhouse rights. McKay takes him down, and he's still swinging. The linesman intervened. Frazier's still trying to get at McKay from the ice. Uh, Riley McKay, no stranger to the rough stuff. And he and Cole Fraser dropped the gloves. Fraser tried to land a few roundhouse rights, maybe got one or two of them in. And then McKay ducked, was able to take Fraser down, and then he landed a few. 8.26 to go, second period. Fuel trail 4-1. to one. And we will take a break. We'll sort this out. It'll be five each for fighting for sure. But we'll tell you more about it right after this. 8.26 to go, second period. Fuel trail 4-1. to one. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Hi, this is Jeff Wheeler, business manager of IBW Local 41. I am proud to represent more than 3,000 union electrical workers in central Indiana. From Bankers Life Fieldhouse to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the annual Circle of Lights, we are proud to power your community. IBEW Local 481 is proud of our union membership and our community leadership. When you get care at Community Health Network, you're part of our community. And in our community, nothing should get between you and your health, not even the cost of care. When the time comes, our advocacy team will help you figure it out, whether you're uninsured or underinsured so you can focus on what really matters, your health. Community Health Network, exceptional care, simply delivered. Get support at ecommunity.com slash simply delivered. Stand by me. Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. 8.26 to go, second period. The Indy Fuel trailing the Toledo Walleye 4-1. to one. The penalty box door is open for Toledo. Fraser got an extra minor for instigating, so the Fuel are going to get a power play out of this. So, the Walleye have to send another player over to serve the minor to Fraser. So, Fraser will get two for instigating and five for fighting. Riley McKay also gets five for fighting. And Riley is no stranger to the fisticuffs. He's second in the league in penalty minutes. That's now 111 for him. That is his sixth major penalty of the year. Now actually up to 114 pims for Riley McKay with those five. So the fuel to the power play, down four to one, an opportunity to get back in the game. Jared Thomas to take the draw in the left wing circle. Seamus Malone and Jan Mondot on the wings. Malone has five power play goals on the season. Here's a shot blocked from the right point. And now another shorthanded chance for Toledo. Potential two on one. Here's a feed in front for Conlon Keenan. Pass was a little too far out in front of him. He turns, fires, rebound on goal. And Brady Tomlack had a point blank chance, but Lackey made the save. So Lackey's had to make a handful of of safe shorthanded after giving up a shorthanded goal earlier in this period. The uh, Fuel gained the line. Texera with its center point. Wrists one into the slot, but it's blocked by the walleye and cleared. Back out to center. Texera sends to the line. The Fuel get on side, and then they're back offside as Seamus Malone got in just a hair ahead of the play, and the whistle blows with a minute 12 to go. Second period, the Fuel trail at 4-1. to one. They're on their second power play. And as we mentioned, it has a minute 12 to go in that. 7.39 to go in the period. And so, Doug Christians is going to change up the power play unit here. And Griff Jeska on to take the draw at neutral ice. Yes, Spencer Watson and Keegan Iverson on either side. Elmir is one of the points. And Jacob Leguerrier the other, and he'll wind up the breakout after Toledo cleared off the draw. Drops it off for Elmir. Across center red, across the blue line. With speed, leaves it for Jessica. Now Elmir. 
in behind the net. It comes, it's wrapped around to Iverson along the right wing half wall. Tried to play it into the slot, but it's kicked out to neutral ice by the walleye. Laguerrier goes back to get it behind his own goal. Mitchell Hurd in on the four check, forcing him to rag some time. 37 seconds to go on the power play as Laguerrier skates it up across his own line. Drops on the delay play. And the fuel will bring it into the zone. Spencer Watson has a poked off of his stick, and here come the walleye the other way. Here's a partial break shot from Boeing on goal, and Lackey comes across to make the save, but a penalty coming on the fuel. Holding penalty on Indy as Keegan Iverson trying to prevent a scoring chance grabbed Boeing who had the step on him and Iverson wrapped the arm around to prevent the scoring chance but it's going to send him to the box. So we'll skate four aside for 20 seconds and then Toledo will have a power play. It's first of the night. And so the two power plays for the Fuel tonight have not been good. Toledo scored a shorthanded goal on the first one and has had four shots shorthanded, including two or three golden opportunities on this one. And finally, the power play was shortened by a penalty on Keegan Iverson. While I win the draw, Alexi walks the line. Feeds over to the far side. Shot turned aside by Lackey. In behind the net, it comes Hensick. Has it forced free from him. C.J. Ike will bring it up the far side. Five seconds to go in the four-on-four. Then Toledo will have a power play. Ike in the right circle. Wrists one high and wide. Seamus Mullen battling for the puck with Hensick along the far boards. Forced free by Hensick across the line. Tried to send it across, but it's picked off by C.J. Ike and cleared by the fuel all the way down. Toledo on the power play. It's first of the ninth. They're seventh, or they're fourth in the, uh, I think the third in the league at 23.8%. The fuel on the kill, 74.1, that's 26th. And the puck in behind the fuel net. Set up to the point, but nobody was home. And so, John Albert, who has one of the walleye's four goals, goes back to get it in his own zone. Up to Brandon Hawkins, always dangerous on the power play as Hawkins skates across the line, flops it in behind the net. He will shoot it from anywhere. And here's the feed across to Hensick. Drops it for her. Trying to center in the slot. Picked off by Jared Thomas. And he clears it all the way down. Christopoulos will leave for Randy Gazzola. 40 seconds to go in Toledo's power play. 525 in the second period. The fuel trailing 4-1. to one. Hensick through center. With speed up the left side is Keenan. He shoots. Fought off by Lackey. And behind the net, Albert. Into the left wing corner. They send it up to the point for Lowney. Across to Keenan. Skates in the top of the circle. Feeds Lowney. Center point. Rister blocked. Over to the far side for Hinsick. Bottom of the circle. Feeds into the slot for Albert. And he fouled one off. And that allows the fuel to gain possession and clear. Five seconds to go in the power play. Ryan Lowney will settle things down behind the net. Iverson's out of the box. We're back to five aside. The fuel one for one on the penalty kill. Pucks it in behind the net. And Lackey leaves for Craig Wizemerski, who takes the puck over to the near corner, pivots the forehand, and outlets to Jan Mondot. He can't get it out. Held into the point by Alexi. Shoveled into the slot. Alexi shoots. It's blocked. Up and out of play. 4.23 to go in the second period. And the fuel trailing 4-1. to one. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. This item was per- okay. Seven. At screen record the league's official. F- skipped. Skip to intend. In pa- page length. Find your perfect Honda this season. Visit your local Honda dealer today. Or shop online. This is my kind of holiday. It's the Happy Honda Day sales event at your Central Indiana Honda dealers. See dealer for financing details. Hi, this is Jeff Wheeler, business manager of IBW Local 41. I am proud to represent more than 3,000 union electrical workers in central Indiana. From Bankers Life Fieldhouse to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the annual Circle of Lights, we are proud to power your community. IBW Local 41 is proud of our union membership and our community leadership. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. 423 to go, second period. The Indy Fuel trail the Toledo Walleye. 
four to one in the Fuel's first ever outdoor game here in downtown Toledo. Carl Elmere got the scoring started for the Fuel, but TJ Hensick and Randy Gazzola answered 34 seconds apart in the first period. And then Keegan Howdeshell and John Albert, the latter short-handed early in the second, extended Toledo's lead to four to one. Back to action, pucks it in behind the Fuel goal. And Indy gets it, sends it out to center. And across the line, two on one. Elmir has it poked off of his stick, tries to center to Craighead, doesn't handle it cleanly, and it's forced free by Brady Tomlack of Toledo. Across the line, right wing circle, looks to center. How to shell shot his block, comes back to Tomlack, takes it to goal, and Lackey holds the fort. How to shell sends it up to the point. And Parcells will wrist it in wide, looking for a tip from Tomlack. It's collected by Schneider of the Fuel, and Indy looks to outlet. Rink-wide pass, knocked down by Toledo, and the Fuel send it back to Darian Craighead in the left wing corner. He's able to get to it below the goal line, and Toledo, however, gains possession, sends it back in, and the Fuel gain the line offside. So, Indy was trying to clear the zone as it was brought in up the right wing board so a whistle and a neutral zone face off with 334 to go in the second period Indy trails 4-1 to one. our officials are discussing things and they have settled whatever it is they were trying to settle and the puck is down and controlled by the walleye Randy Gazzola in his own zone sends it shortly for John Albert across the line to Hawkins back to Albert Right wing boards, turns and fires Lackey with a save high on the body as that shot rose on him and looked like it fooled him a little bit. Albert into the left wing corner. Back with it along the left half wall. Back diagonal to Gazzola. Right point. Holds. Rister blocked right back to him. Gazzola, top of the right wing circle. Waits for traffic to set up. Then feeds it underneath to Brandon Hawkins for a wraparound and he scores. Brandon Hawkins absolutely terrorized the fuel last year when he played for Fort Wayne, and it's kind of a repeat tonight as Gazzola waited for the traffic to set up, then shot it wide because he saw Hawkins coming low, and Hawkins just got to the puck and beat Lackey to the post. And it's Hawkins... Second goal of the year in just his sixth game. And the Fuel are now down 5-1. to one. Gazzola now with a 2.9 as he will get the primary assist. Felt like last year, whenever the Fuel played Fort Wayne, especially at home, Brandon Hawkins had a goal every night and... He continues his mastery of the fuel. Here's a feed in front. Christopoulos with a save, and he pounces on the rebound. The fuel have had a number of good scoring chances. Follow along live. Heading level one. Article landmark. Very good tonight. John Albert got the second assist on Hawkins' wraparound goal at 17 minutes of the second period. So Albert and Gazzola now with a goal and an assist each in this one. And Griff Jeska loses the offensive zone draw to Hurd, who scales it back into the fuel zone and all the way down. Icing is waved off as Texera goes back to get it. Sends it up the near wall, a little bit past Ike. Hurd tracks it down into zone line. D to D to Martinet, and he'll chip it in to the fuel zone. Texera gets to it behind his own goal. Takes a bump and sends it over to the far side. And here's a feed across. The line, C.J. Ike has a breakaway, and he fires just wide. C.J. had a step on the D. He didn't have too much time to do anything with it, and he just had to make a quick move, and now Wisimerski fires one in on goal from center ice, and Christopoulos makes the save, and now McKay and Martinet exchanging shoves after the whistle as Riley McKay is back after serving his fighting major. McKay's given up a lot of size to Martinet. Craig Wisimerski came over and 
he does not give up a lot of size to Martinet. It's rare the player who doesn't is Chris Martinet stands at six foot seven. And Martinet has had a couple of years in Indy. He played for the ice in 2013-14 and won a Clark Cup with them. And then later won the Memorial Cup with the London Knights. And looks like McKay is going to be sent to the box, as is Martinet here with 2.05 to go. And assume these will be matching roughing miners. And McKay was cutting in on goal, and Martinet just stood and intercepted him to keep McKay away from his goaltender. Well, the fuel trail 5 1, 205 to go. Here in the second period, we'll skate four on four for the next two minutes as McKay and Martinet will each sit for matching minors. Jordan Schneider at center sends it into the Toledo zone. And it is matching roughing minors on McKay and Martinet. Puck force free by the fuel. Schneider at his own line up the left wing boards. Steers it ahead to Jan Mondot across the Toledo line. Feeds it across. Picked up by Laguerre at the right point. He'll bring it down the wall. Bottom of the right wing circle. Put on the brakes in the corner. Take it back to the forehand. Back up the wall. And drop it off for Mondot. Jan in to the corner for Thomas. Back up to the point. Now Laguerre into the middle for Mondot. Curls to the top of the left wing circle. To the forehand. He shoots. Blocked. And the puck squirts up to the point, and Toledo's got an odd man rush. Heard across the line, right wing circle. Sends it across for a shot and a goal. Adam Parcells with a one-timer. And it's now 6-1. to one. Well, Adam Parcells, that's got to feel good for him against his former team. And that's one of those cases where you take a chance in the offensive zone in a four-on-four -four situation and lose the puck, Brett Boeing was able to win it from Schneider, and it basically was an on-man rush from there, a two-on-one, and it looked like it was going to be a three-on-one. Jared Thomas was back on D, and he tried to sprawl to block the pass, but it got through, and Adam Parcells scores his first career professional goal. Mitchell Hurd will get the assist. Brett Boeing, the second assist, and the fuel are down 6-1. to one. Four goals in the second period for Toledo. Final minute of the frame, Brandon Hawkins across center red will fire it in behind the net. And Teixeira will drop it off. And Sheamus Malone tries to turn it forward. Lowney gets to it, sends it up the right wing wall, but Malone gets to it again, and Hammers it in behind the net. Spencer Watson takes it away. He shoots and scores. Spencer Watson steals the puck from Christopoulos, who mishandled it just a little bit, and he stick-handled to the front and fired it into the gaping net, and the fuel are back on the board. It's 6-2. to two. Spencer Watson scores his 14th of the year, and Christopoulos on a dump in. Just handled it. Spencer Watson intercepted the rim around and then took it to the front of the net. And fired it into the gaping net. So the fuel needed a break. And they got one. Spencer Watson unassisted in 1925. And the fuel have cut their deficit to a 6-2. to two. Here's a shot right off the draw by Toledo that goes high and wide. And Elmir breaks it out to center. And comes back to the walleye line. We're four on four for another 15 seconds. Gazzola brings it into the zone. It's forced free from him by Laguerrier. Back out to neutral ice where the walleye settle it down. Cole Fraser, who's out of the box after serving his seven minutes of penalty time, collects it, and they'll send it in. Four seconds to go in the period. As we're back to five aside, and Laguerrier just bleeds out the remainder of the clock. Well... 
a rough second period for the Fuel. Toledo scores four times, and they came in bunches. They've come in bunches for the Walleye in this game as they now lead at 6-2 to two over the Fuel. Shots on goal in the period, 16 for Toledo, and four of them found the back of the net. 12 for the Fuel. Indy with a 28-26 shot advantage in the game, but right now they trail at 6-2 here at Fifth Third Field in Toledo. The Fuel will need a big comeback in the third period. Right now, they enter it with a four-goal deficit. We'll take a break, come back with our second intermission show right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda Furr, Physician Executive for Primary Care at Community Health Network. When you need care, nothing should get in the way. No barriers or hoops to jump through, just an easy way to get the support you need however it's best for you. Which is why we offer tried and true points of access, like your primary care physician or your local med check for urgent care and community clinics at Walgreens throughout central Indiana. But we're also adding new ways to get exceptional care like improved tools in my chart to connect you with your provider, increased virtual appointments in primary care, urgent care, and even specialty care. We're also expanding virtual access for your behavioral health needs, both for counseling and psychiatry. At Community, you'll always get the best care possible, no matter how you choose to access it. Community Health Network, exceptional care, simply delivered. Visit us at ecommunity.com slash get care. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Second intermission in Toledo. The Indy Fuel trailing the host walleye 6-2. to two. After the Fuel scored the first goal of the game, Carl Elmer at 16-08 of the first, his fifth of the season from Iverson and Ike. Toledo answered. T.J. Hensick banks one in off the goalie, his 16th of the year from Martinet and Fraser at 17 minutes of the first. And then Randy Gazzola, 34 seconds later, his third of the year from Tom Lack and How to Shell made it a two to one game, and that's where we stood after one. But things just kind of fell apart for the fuel in the second period. Keegan How to Shell made it three to one. Tool show bookmark share for back refresh button. Actions available. Toolbar refresh button refresh slide one of one. Tool for share show tab tab in I away two sec six to lead six. T home car M six slot fur spent walk not slot fall in the in the in the touch to play loading ellipses hallmark of zero two oh three in the fuel at all then when he was the assistant coach uh, uh to Derek Lalonde that was always a sport heading level two is that 
when they get the puck on the penalty kill, they're going. They're looking for turnovers. They're looking for shorthanded chances, and they're getting them. And obviously got the shorthanded goal from Albert, but they had a number of shorthanded chances. That was actually, I think, their fourth shot on that shorthanded bid. And then the next time the Fuel had a power play, Toledo again had a number of chances, had a two-on-one, had a partial breakaway that led to a penalty that uh, Keegan Iverson had to take to uh, prevent Brett Boeing from scoring. And obviously this is a very fast Toledo team, a a very skilled team, and you can see why they're uh, the top team of the division right now. And obviously the fuel have struggled against them so far. They played really well the last time they were here back in November and kind of a unfortunate play at the end of the game, just a a funky bounce that went right to a player in the slot and led to the tying goal, and Toledo eventually won that game in overtime. But it's a a game where the Fuel obviously uh, would like to get something going in the third period. Look, a couple of weeks ago, The Fuel looked like they had Kalamazoo down and out, three-goal lead, final 10 minutes of the game, and then all of a sudden five goals come in the next seven minutes. There's no reason this Indy team can't do this tonight, and uh, so that's got to be your mentality here going into the third period is get one early. Got to divide the period up into four or five-minute segments. Get one of the first four minutes, get one of the next four minutes, and now it's a two-goal game, and then anything can happen. So... The Fuel trailing Toledo right now 6-2 to two here in the second intermission outdoors at 5th 3rd Field. We will step aside, and when we come back, we'll bring you the ECHL Plays of the Week. Comes up right after this. You're listening to Indy Fuel Hockey. If you're looking for an exciting night of hockey, visit the Indiana Farmers Coliseum to help cheer our Indy Fuel to victory. If you're looking to score a great deal on business insurance, look no further than Indiana Farmers Insurance. The Indy Fuel chose Indiana Farmers Insurance because they wanted a local business that understands local business. It's a partnership that's truly worthy of a hat trick. To find an independent Indiana Farmers Insurance agent near you, visit indianafarmers.com. From across America's premier double-A hockey league, this is the ECHL Plays of the Week. High slot, slap shot, off the glove, and in! Now for the net, he scores! Hello everyone and welcome to the special holiday edition of the ECHL Plays of the Week. I'm your host Colin Shuck of the Idaho Steelheads and I invite you to get your favorite drink, kick up your feet by the fire, and unwind as we bring you the best plays heading into the holiday season. The Florida Everblades took two of three games from the Atlanta Gladiators last week, and Everblades rookie forward Jake Jeremko netted a timely third-period goal on Wednesday, which would be the game winner in a come-from-behind victory 3-1 for Florida. On the left wing, Pendenza in across the blue line. Centering feed, puck is loose, and a juicy rebound as Sambrook shoots. Hit the goal, post rebound, score! Jake Jaremko at the side of the net, and the Blades have the upper hand. It's 2-1 Florida. That's Mike Kelly on the Florida Everblades broadcast network. The Everblades sit atop the South Division heading into the holidays. The Rapid City Rush flew to Boise for the final pre-holiday weekend, and with the game tied at 1 in the second period on Wednesday, the Rush forced a turnover and Tanner Shackle barreled down the left wing. He hit a streaking Brett Gravel on the back post for a tap-in goal that gave the Rush the lead for good. Here's Brian Gardner on the Rush Broadcast Network. The Rush now into the neutral zone. Tanner Shackle down the left wing with an edge. Shackle in front of the net for a shot. They score! Brett Gravel finishes. What a feed from Tanner Shackle. And Rapid City has taken the lead back. 3.39 to go in the second period, and it's 2-1. That 2-1 win over the Steelhead snapped Idaho's four-game win streak and extended Rapid City's win streak to three. The Rush are now sitting third in the division, heading into the break with 11 wins on the season. 
Darian Crankhead made his debut with the Indy Fuel Friday night against the Cincinnati Cyclones. Acquired earlier in the week via a trade with the Norfolk Admirals, Crankhead made an immediate depression, tallying a hat trick in the Fuel 7-2 victory, including this power play goal. Here's Andrew Smith on the Indy Fuel Broadcast Network. Into the left wing corner, back to Yetman. 50 seconds to go in the power play. Lots of zone time here for the Fuel. Crankhead skates it, shoots, scores! It's a hat trick for Darian Craighead in his Indy Fuel debut. And the Fuel have connected four times on the power play as the headwear comes flying out of the stands. Craighead would go on to tally five goals and two assists on a weekend where the Fuel scored 22 goals in just three games. Playing with a league minimum 13 skaters, the Orlando Solar Bears visited Allen on Friday night facing a tumultuous task against the Americans. Orlando's Joe Careffa started things off right for the road team in the first period. Tries to angle it toward the slot, knocked away by Brodzinski. Andrew McLean finds a man on a breakaway. Gareffa moves in, shoots, score! Joe Gareffa gets the Solar Bears on the board. A phenomenal pass from Andrew McLean. And the Solar Bears have the lead late in the first period, 1-0. That's Jesse Liebman on the Solar Bears broadcast network. Gareffa went on to post a career-high four points on the strength of two goals and two assists as the Solar Bears went on to win 6-2 over Allen. The Maine Mariners had lost four of their first five trips to post-regulation play this season until Friday night in Trois Riviere. With the Mariners and Lions locked up at three aside through three periods and overtime, the two battled into a shootout. After the first three shootout attempts were stopped, Maine forward Cam Askew found the net and goaltender Calum Booth did the rest. Right-handed shot trying to give the Mariners the lead in the second round of the shootout. Askew scores! Very patient. And at the last moment, ripped it top shelf. The Lions have to score to extend it. 23 points on the year, left-handed shooter. Archambault, forehand move, saved by Booth. And the Mariners have defeated the Lions in a shootout and a feel-good win here tonight in Quebec. That was Michael Keeley on the call on the Mariners broadcast network. Maine snapped a seven-game losing streak with the win in a game where they were reduced to just eight forwards and four defensemen. The Cincinnati Cyclones continued their season-long seven-game road trip with a pair of games in Fort Wayne last weekend. On Saturday's matchup with the Comets, Cincy carried a 3-1 lead into the third period, only for Fort Wayne to battle back and force overtime. Then, the reigning ECHL Player of the Week took over. The Cyclones trying to skate ahead. Here's Yoshiro Hirano, two-on-one. Hirano the left. Mingo crash in the net. Hirano scores! The overtime finish! from the Japanese sensation that has swept Cyclones Nation. That was Andrew Mossbrooks on the Cyclones broadcast network. Hirano added another goal to his totals in the Cyclones 5-3 win over the Comets on Sunday and now leads the ECHL with 16 goals this season. Subjectively, we've saved the best delivery for last as the Idaho Steelheads capped off their three-game home weekend against Rapid City with a bang. Starting within the first minutes of the game, the on-ice delivery service himself, Luke Brown, came up with a goal of the year candidate to open the scoring. Here's my call on Sparklight TV. Oda turns over the pocket, loose in front, through the leg, scores! Oh, what a goal by Luke Brown, who craves it through 10 deck for his eighth of the year and a 1-0 lead. He put that puck through his legs to get it into the back of the net. My goodness! What a way to open up the game. The Sealheads finished a 12 of 14 home stretch with a 10 3 and 1 record and head into the holiday break second in the ECHL, their best midseason ranking since the 2009 2010 Brabham Cup season. That's all for the final edition of the ECHL Plays of the Week for 2021. Make sure you catch all the live ECHL action in high definition by subscribing to flowhockey.tv. And also thank your friendly social media team folks for their work this holiday season. From the City of Trees, this is Colin Schock saying so long. Have a happy, safe, and healthy holiday season, and we'll see you in 2022. Tonight's game is brought to you by the ECHL, celebrating its 34th season of affordable family entertainment. The ECHL would like to recognize the following league sponsors. AMI Graphics, official signage provider. AthleticNet, official jersey supplier. 
Baron Rings, official championship ring supplier. BFL Canada Insurance and Sutton Special Risk, sponsors of the 2022 ECHL Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Flow Sports, the exclusive streaming provider of the ECHL. Geico, official auto insurance of the ECHL. The Fairley Group, official commercial insurance provider. Handbid, the official mobile auction app. Honigs, the official partner of the ECHL officiating team. Howie's Hockey Tape, official hockey tape and lace provider. In Glasgow, official puck provider. Migray Group, your source for game-worn jerseys. Sideline Swap, official online marketplace of the ECHL. And Warrior, exclusive on-ice equipment provider of the ECHL and title sponsor of the 2022 ECHL All-Star Classic. Catch all of the ECHL action live in high definition by logging on to flowhockey.tv. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Andrew Smith back with you at Fifth Third Field in Toledo. As the Indy Fuel trail, the host walleye 6-2 to two through two periods. Let's take a quick spin around the ECHL scoreboard. Games involving Central Division teams. Tulsa and Kalamazoo are tied at one. That's early in the third period. Justin Taylor has scored for the K-Wings. Greenville leads Cincinnati 2-1. to one. Liam Pecoraro has scored both goals for Greenville. Mike McLeod has scored for the Cyclones. That game early in the third. Wheeling has taken a 2-1 to one lead over Norfolk after two periods as Brandon Sajan and Patrick Watling have scored for Wheeling. And elsewhere in the league, Orlando beat South Carolina 5-4 to four in overtime. Redding shut out Worcester 2 to nothing. Adirondack over Newfoundland 4 to 3 in overtime. Maine rallied to beat Trois Rivieres 5 to 3. And other games currently underway. Idaho and Allen are scoreless after one. Florida and Atlanta are scoreless late in the first. Fort Wayne and Iowa, Wichita and Kansas City will face off at the top of the hour in Utah and Rapid City in an hour in the National Hockey League. The Devils beat the Oilers Six to five in overtime on Jack Hughes' second goal of the game. Golden Knights beat the Ducks three to one. Caps and Wings are scoreless midway through the first. The Lightning lead the Rangers one to nothing on Steven Stamkos' power play goal that game after one. Tomorrow the Blackhawks finally back in action. They'll take on the Nashville Predators in Nashville at two o'clock. And of course the Winter Classic tomorrow seven o'clock. The Blues in the Wild from Minnesota. Send a birthday shout out to Kurt Klein endorsed celebrating at number 61 today. He was a member of the Indianapolis Checkers in the 1985-86 season and a longtime coach in the American Hockey League primarily as well as uh, in Europe. And uh, also spent a, a year with the U.S. National Team Development Program and other former players celebrating birthdays today, Paul Gillis, who played for the ice in 91-92, and Austin Hervey, who played for the ice in 2012-13. On this day in Indy Hockey history, New Year's Eve, 1941, Joe Turner had a shutout, making 30 saves to beat the Buffalo Bisons 4-0 for the Indianapolis Capitals at the Coliseum. On New Year's Eve, 1942, the defending Calder Cup champion Capitals would get two four-point games from Bill Thompson and Les Douglas in a 7-2 victory over the Providence Reds. On this date, 1958, Don Smith had a hat trick for the Indianapolis Chiefs as they beat the Troy Bruins 8-3 at the Coliseum. On this date, 1959, the Chiefs defeated the Louisville Rebels 5-1 behind two goals and an assist from Germain Leger. And... In 1983, the Checkers beat Tulsa 7-4 with Bruce Affleck tallying a goal and three assists in that one. John Van Beesbrook made 52, or saw 52 shots, made 45 saves, and still took the loss in that one. On this date, 1984, Indy native and former IU club hockey player Lance Allen had a hat trick for the Checkers as they beat the Milwaukee Admirals 6-4. And we had 23 shots and 59 overall. Darren Pang made 53 saves for the Admirals in the loss. On this date, 1986, George Servinus had a four-goal game for the Checkers in a 7-5 loss to Fort Wayne. On this date in 1998, David Heimovitz had two goals and two assists for the ice in a 5-4 shootout victory over the Cincinnati Cyclones. And 
on uh, some other New Year's Day or New Year's Eve games. On, 19, on 2002, ATM Moran for the ice had a hat trick and a 7-2 victory over Fort Worth. On this date in 2018, Ryan Rupert had a goal and three assists and a 6-2 fuel victory at Kalamazoo. And on this date in 2011, John Gillies had a 26-save shutout as the ice blanked Youngstown 3 to nothing. So that's a look at New Year's Eve in Indy Hockey history. The two teams back on the ice here for the third period. We've had some rain during the intermission. It appears to have stopped. There are some showers in the area. And there was a little bit of a forecast for some showers after the game, but they have popped up here. And we had a little deluge during the intermission, but it was happening as the ice was being resurfaced. That's a that's a good thing. And they were able to get that taken care of. The puck is down and away we go in the third period. It is played into the Toledo zone, but the walleye able to bring it back out. And they bring it across the line, but Spencer Watson breaks up their rush and scales it back into the Toledo zone. Settled down there by the walleye. They send it to the fuel line, taken back by Indy. Up the right wing, Jan Mondot brings it into the Toledo zone, into the right wing corner. Swept around to Gazzola. He'll outlet to Hawkins up the far wall, and they'll work it out through center. They chip it into the fuel zone, and it's chipped back out, and here comes Jan Mondot, 3-2 and two across the line. Mondot into the high slot. His pass is broken up. He tracks it down along the right wing boards, backhands it in behind the net on the cycle, and forces it over to the far side. A soft pass into the high slot, but all the fuel players had vacated it, and Brett Boeing brings it out to center. Sends it up the far wall, tried to dump it in, but it's picked off by Laguerrier, and he... Tries to head man it to Riley McKay at the Toledo line and ends up misconnecting and going down for icing. Fuel down 6-2, to two, one minute gone in the third period. And if you're in deep, the thought's got to be try to get one early and then get another one. Seamus Malone to take the draw in the defensive zone against Mitchell Hurd. It is to Lackey's right. Or what we'd say is the left wing circle in Toledo's offensive zone. And now Hurd's been tossed out. Hensick is in and it is raining again. As those of you watching on flow could see, here's a shot on goal. So he made a rebounder with a wraparound attempt from Hurd, but Lackey was able to shut that down. Laguerrier the other way, back across the line, tried to get it to McKay in the high slot. It was wanted away from him over to the left wing boards, and the walleye get it back. Their outlet attempt is knocked down, but they'll bring it into the fuel zone. Heard left wing circle, feeds it in front for Boeing. He gets a shot on goal. Lackey sprawls to make the save and covers up for a whistle. And now Riley McKay, no surprise, stirring the pot again. This time he and Mitchell Heard are conversing after the whistle. McKay has had a fighting major and a roughing minor in this game. Bring a chance off the rush. Heard trying to feed Boeing and good job of holding the fort by Lackey and then covering up the rebound. Face off controlled by the fuel in their defensive zone. They'll send it up the left wing wall. Lateral pass at center for Elmir. His dump end attempt is knocked down by Toledo. We'll chip it back to center red where it's settled down by the fuel. Wristed in behind the net. Alexi tips it out to center to Keegan Howdeshell. Rink wide pass across the line. Give and go with Howdeshell into the high slot. His stick is lifted by C.J. Ike, and that allows the fuel to take the puck and the lob it out to center as Walters tried to hold it in at the line but could not. We'll send it back behind his own net to his D partner, Adam Parcells, who has a goal and an assist in this game. A lot of walleye with two points, as you might expect, as they lead it 6-2. to two. Here's a rink-wide pass to Albert across the line. Backhands it in behind that. Jared Thomas goes back to get it for Indy, and he'll rim it around the far wall. Toledo is just playing a very safe game right now. 1-4 checker in, a 1-3-1 one, one, or a 1-2-2 two, two through the neutral zone, and keep the play in front of you. They're content to just bleed this out. Game they lead 6-2. to two. Just chip it in and keep the play in front. Here's a shot 
from the right wing circle that's on goal and a save is made. Another bank attempt ends up being thrown out into the slot. Turnaround shot from the slot is on goal and Lackey makes the save. Puck played up to the point and out of the zone. Mondot two on two with Spencer Watson across the line. Drops it to Watson. Right point. Your wrist one looking for a deflection from Mondot but it was blocked wide by Gazzola in front. Here's a feed from a shot from the point on goal and Christopoulos makes the save and covers up for a whistle. 16.52 to go third period. The Fuel trail 6-2. Toledo with a pair of goals late in the first and then four in the second. Spencer Watson firing a shot from along the left wing boards and Christopoulos making the save. We've seen a lot of Spencer Watson heading over to his offside on the cycle. This line with Thomas and Mondot. Fuel win the draw, send it in behind the net. Set up the far wall by the walleye. Chaika settles it down. Goes D to D to Laguerrier. And Fuel try to steer it through center, but it's picked off by Hurd. He tried to send it goalward, but it was knocked down by the Fuel. And behind the net, hops over a stick. Chaika collects in the left wing corner in his defensive zone and is able to get it out to Elmir across the line, up the left side, give and go with Elmir, broken up and collected by Hensick in his own defensive slot. And he'll just backhand it all the way down and take an icing. 16-13 to go. Third period, Fuel trailing Toledo 6-2. to two. Six different goal scorers for Toledo. Hensick, Gazzola in the first. How to shell, Albert shorthanded, Hawkins and Parcells in the second. Carl Elmir got the scoring started for the Fuel and Spencer Watson has the most recent goal of the game coming in the final minute of the second period. For Spencer, that's now eight goals in his last nine games. While I clear it out to center, up the near boards, chipped out to Carl Elmir. He'll feather it over to McKay. Back into the left wing corner, McKay was bracing for a hit and ended up delivering it on Fraser. Those two exchanged some fisticuffs earlier in this game. McKay Gets the puck at center, and Steve Alexi is trying to rough him up. And McKay's got the palms up. He takes a little bit of a shot at Alexi as the walleye play to the fuel line. The fuel knock it down and send it back in. Pass for Keegan Iverson just a little bit too far out in front of him. Picked off by McElmurray of Toledo in his own zone. Ahead to Alexi. He'll bring it across the fuel line. Tied up by Zulsdorf, but the next layer brings it in. That was McElmurray, and he shoves it in behind the net. Feed up to the point for Parcells, left point. Wristed back in behind the net by him. Schneider gets to it for Indy, plays it up the near wall, and it's taken back by the walleye. Comes in behind the goal where Jared Thomas will settle it down for Indy and look to steer it up. Thomas beats one man across his own line, across center red, and brings it up across the Toledo line, shoots, and Christopoulos makes a glove save. The shot looked like it was probably going wide, but Christopoulos... Decides discretion is the better part of Valor. Makes sure he gloves it and then holds on for a whistle with 15.01 to go. Solo rush from Thomas and the shot from along the left wing boards. Fuel will be home on Sunday against the Iowa Heartlanders. Offensive zone draw comes out to the point and it's played out to center by Toledo. Bring it into the zone. Laguerre does a nice job of tying up Keenan. Those two go in behind the net following the puck. Teixeira kicks it to the stick. Tries to outlet to Watson, but the walleye take it back. Send it up to the point. Lowney's shot is deflected out of play. 14.41 to go. Third period. Outdoors here in Toledo. Fifth third field. Normally the home of the Toledo Mud Hens. Beautiful downtown ballpark. And this week, the home of the Toledo Walleye for two games. And also playing a number of college games here during Winterfest as the Walleye control off the draw. Albert behind the fuel goal, working on Laguerrier into the right wing corner. Brings it up the wall. Backhands it back into the corner. And in behind, uh, up along the near wall. Puck battle ensues as C.J. Ike's trying to force it free. And it finally comes to Carl Elmir. He'll send it across to Iverson up the right wing side. Rink wide pass looking for Ike. The pass was a little too far out in front of him and would have been an offside, so the fuel will have to curl back. 
Brandon Hawkins brings it into the zone. He fires high and wide. Hawkins will shoot from anywhere and everywhere. Carl Elmer collects. Sends it up into the Toledo zone in behind the net. Martinet, the former fuel player, goes back to get it. Drops it off to his D partner, Fraser. And the walleye just spray it back to the fuel line. Puck sit into the Toledo zone and out of play. 13.41 to go in the third period. The Indy Fuel trail Toledo 6-2. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Remember Krista from Kemper Technology Consulting last year? What's icing? Well, she's learned a lot since then. Get him! Hit him again! Shoot! And she's become a huge Fuel fan. Go, Fuel! Let the team at Kemper put that same enthusiasm to work for you. Specializing in accounting software support with QuickBooks Professional Certification, Kemper gives you real people solving real problems. They can also help your network infrastructure, too. Call 866-966-5633 or visit KemperTC.com. Come on, ref! Idiot! If you're looking for an exciting night of hockey, visit the Indiana Farmers Coliseum to help cheer our Indy Fuel to victory. If you're looking to score a great deal on business insurance, look no further than Indiana Farmers Insurance. The Indy Fuel chose Indiana Farmers Insurance because they wanted a local business that understands local business. It's a partnership that's truly worthy of a hat trick. To find an independent Indiana Farmers Insurance agent near you, visit indianafarmers.com. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. 13.41 to go in the third period. The Fuel trailing Toledo 6-2 to outdoors at Winterfest here in Toledo. We've had to dodge a little bit of rain here in this third period as well. As some showers have been in the area and since the second intermission. Fuel went a center ice draw and sent it into the zone as they tried to spring Malone splitting the D, but it was broken up by Toledo. They'll try to bring it the other way. Boeing across the line. Back diagonal feed picked off by Craighead. In his own defensive slot, nice soft pass ahead to Wisimerski. He'll skeet it up across the line. Backhands it in behind the Toledo goal. Goes after it himself. Fraser chips it past him. And it comes out turned over. Here's a shot from Schneider on goal. Save made Christopoulos. Rebound loose in the slot. The Fuel trying to hunt for it. Jeska couldn't get a stick on it. And the walleye able to clear. Hensick tries to chip it into the Fuel zone once and twice. It was blocked down by Schneider. But the next layer is Boeing. He brings it into the zone. Schneider ties him up. And the whistle blows. And we have a penalty coming on the fuel as a cross-checking minor coming. And it looks like it's going to be two penalties here as Hurd and Jessica are both being sent to the box. Mitchell Hurd is inciting the crowd from the penalty box. Got a pump in his hands up. So the time of the penalties will be 7.01. Jessica and Hurd. And it looks like we're going to skate four aside for two minutes. So matching minors on Jessica and Hurd. And so we're four on four for the second time in this game. Fuel in the defensive zone draw. Teixeira drops it off. And Jared Thomas will bring it across center red. He'll bring it back into his own zone. And across center red. Heard for holding. Jessica for cross-checking of the penalties. And the fuel of control. Up to the point, Zulsdorf. Over to the left circle, Teixeira shoots, fought off by Christopoulos. Rebound put on goal, save mid. Rebound, Teixeira with a tremendous chance on the doorstep, but Christopoulos held the fort and robs Teixeira from the top of the blue paint. A couple of tremendous chances for the Fuel captain, but Billy Christopoulos, as Fuel fans know, is an excellent goaltender and came up big there. A minute two to go on the matching minors. Toledo tries to throw it in front to John Albert, but it's picked off by the Fuel. Guerrier across the line, trying to feed it across to Spencer Watson, broken up by the walleye and sent all the way down for icing with 11.46 to go in the third period. No scoring in this period. The Fuel trails 6-2. to two. Toledo scored six consecutive goals after the Fuel got the initial 
tally from Carl Elmir, but two in the later stages of the first and then four goals, two early in the second and two in the final three minutes of the second. Gave Toledo a 6-1 to one lead before Spencer Watts and answered. Seamus Malone wins an offensive zone draw. We're four on four for another 43 seconds. Schneider with it. Top of the left wing circle. Shoots on goal through traffic. Christopoulos with a glove save with Seamus Malone providing the screen in front. 38 seconds remaining. And the matching minors to Hurd and Jeska. Offensive zone draw for the fuel in the left wing circle. Seamus Malone to take it. He's got Craighead on his right and wins it back to the point. Schneider, the far side, sends it in behind the net to Seamus Malone. He'll play it along, looking for Craighead, but it's picked off by Hawkins. Ahead to Albert across the line. He shoots, blocked out of play by Jordan Schneider. Good stick by Schneider coming back on deep. That's the thing, right now you're down by four, but if you're the fuel, you want to build a little bit of momentum here. Obviously, things have not gone the way you want them to, even though it's been a really special night here in Toledo. Mitchell Hurd's getting the crowd going again from the penalty box. They win the draw. Martinet over to the far side for a shot that goes high. And Chayka collects the rebound with Hensick. Chasing him. Laguerrier flushed out from behind of the net. Brings it up the far wall. Turns it over. Try to drop pass. Gave it right to Hensick. He tries to wait out Lackey who makes the save. Rebound put off the side of the net by Hensick. Lackey is sprawling around but finally gets back to his feet as he waited out Hensick after a really bad turnover. And here's a shot from along the boards by Boeing on goal. Lackey was without a stick. He made the save and then the Fuel shoveled the rebound under his pads to allow their goaltender to get a whistle and get a stick back. Laguerrier just had a miscommunication with Chaika. Tried to drop pass and Chaika wasn't expecting it. Hensick saw it, just jumped in and picked it off and skated in all alone. A really good save made by Lackey as Hensick made several moves and Lackey just waited him out. 10.49 to go, third period. Face off back in the fuel zone. Two lackeys right. And it's won cleanly by Brady Tomlack up to the point. Parcells sweeps it over to the far side for how to shell. In behind the net, it comes to Tomlack. Working on Malone. Leaves it for how to shell. Takes it out to the left wing corner. He is bumped into the boards hard by Wizomerski. Seamus Malone tries to dig the puck free. Four-man puck battle. In the left wing corner of the Fuel's defensive zone. Squirts up the boards to Craighead. He's able to outlet to center. Riley McKay on his horse. Trying to get to a puck in the offensive zone. He's brought down. Flicks to center to Craighead. But it's broken up by Parcells. And he outlets to center as far as center red. Where it's broken up by Schneider. Taken back by Toledo up the right wing boards. And Tom Lack brings it into the zone offside. 10-13 to go. In the third. 6-2 the Fuel trail. Fans, don't forget this event is being streamed live around the world today. Go to flowhockey.tv to catch all of the action and archive footage of this event. Enjoy the event. Maybe not the score so much if you're a Fuel fan. As Toledo looks like it is poised to go 4-0 against the Fuel this year unless Indy can erase a four-goal deficit in the final 10-07. The Fuel ice the puck off the draw. The sound people here playing Hang On Sloopy, which is the, believe it or not, the official state song of the state of Ohio. And uh, the crowd spelling out Ohio with the, uh, on the proper beats. As the puck brought into the Toledo zone, right wing corner, set up to the point. Keone Texier over to his D partner, Zulsdorf. He fires one blocked in front as it hit the pile. Iverson follows it over to the left wing corner. It's played away from him. Ike pinches down to try to keep it alive, but the walleye able to skate it up the near side. Rink wide pass taken off the boards by Keenan in the left wing circle. Texera rides him in behind the net. Keenan sends it out in front for a shot that hits the post. 
Conlon Keenan doing some work below the goal line. Sets up a pretty good scoring chance. Now, here is John Albert bringing it in toward the goal as he got a step on the D, and he couldn't get the shot on goal, but he draws a penalty. And the walleye headed back to the power play. 9.18 to go, third period. The Fuel trailing 6-2, to two, and they'll be shorthanded as Ryan Zulsdorf's heading into the box. We'll take a break. Be back with more right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Midwest Sport and Spine is the official chiropractor of the Indy Fuel. Go where the fuel go for sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Midwest Sport and Spine offers state-of-the-art technology, chiropractic physical therapy, athletic training, and massage therapy all under one roof. And yes, we take your insurance. Take advantage of our Fuel Fan discount for a $59 introductory massage offer. Midwest Sport and Spine, sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Go to MidwestSportAndSpineCenter.com to schedule your appointment now. Hi, this is Jeff Wheeler, business manager of IBW Local 41. I am proud to represent more than 3,000 union electrical workers in central Indiana. From Bankers Life Fieldhouse to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the annual Circle of Lights, we are proud to power your community. IBEW Local 481 is proud of our union membership and our community leadership. Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Toledo to the power play for the second time in this game as Ryan Zulsdorf is in the box for holding, trying to prevent a scoring chance as John Albert got the step. Walleye with control off the draw shot blocked in front. Good sprawling block by Jordan Schneider. Toledo maintains possession. Hawkins, left wing circle, tries to fire one high on Lackey, but misses the net, and then the walleye clear the puck on themselves as Hensick was trying to feed Gazzola at the point, but the pass was errant. Walleye back into the zone. Hawkins into the right wing corner, back up to Hawkins at the point. Gazzola center point. Over to the left circle, Hensick. Back up to the point, Gazzola wrists one into the slot. They feed it across, but it's blocked Back out to the point, but not out. Held in by Gazzola. Into the right wing corner. Back along the right half wall. And Hurd leaves it for Hinson. Back up top for Hawkins. Curls back on the half wall. They bump it back up to the point. Gazzola wrists one. That is blocked out of play. A minute two to go in Toledo's power play. 8-19 in the third period. Some friendly fire. John Albert got hit with that pocket, looked like. And he has doubled over in pain. Looks like he's grabbing his wrist, shaking his right hand a little bit. So Randy Gazzola took a shot. and John Albert, I think that hit him. And Riley McKay, for good measure, sent him to the ice. Fuel win the draw and hammer it all the way down. Good clear by Keone Teixeira. And Christopoulos will leave for his defense. Ryan Lowney, an excellent power play quarterback, steers it up to Howdeshell up the right side. Rink wide pass, a little too far out in front of Keenum, but he tracks it down along the left wing board. Sends it up to the point, Lowney. Over to Howdeshell, right wing corner. And he spins it forward. And Tomlack tried to feed it to Boeing in the right wing circle, but it was broken up by the fuel and cleared all the way down. And he will go for a change. Get a fresh penalty killing unit out. As the walleye look to steer it up, Lowney up the near boards. We'll chip it in behind the net through both corners. Conlon Keenan in the left wing corner chips it. Craig Wismerski gets to it, bangs it off the wall and all the way down. Seamus Malone giving chase in the offensive zone. Christopoulos will settle it down. Malone causes him some anxious moments, but Christopoulos is able to get it to the D. Howdeshell brings it out to center. Zulsdorf's out of the box. We're back to five aside. The fuel two for two on the kill. Alexi with it at the left point and sends it up now to Tomlack, left corner. Back up to the point. Alexi shoots, save made. Lackey rebound. McElmurray puts it back on goal and Lackey gobbles it up and makes the save with 6.57 to go in the third. Fuel trailing Toledo 6 to 2. In the waning moments of Winterfest here at Fifth Third Field. These outdoor games have proliferated at all levels of hockey since the Michigan Wolverines and Michigan State Spartans played. 
back in 2000. And of course, the first Winter Classic it just kind of bred a monster, and it's been a lot of fun ever since. And everyone is special. While I try to send it into the fuel zone, it's a foot race. Texera is able to win it from Alexi and take it behind his own net. Alexi bumps him. Texera rims it around. McElmurray will fire it back in off of Texera's broken stick. A good play by Jan Mondot to force it free out to center. One on two across the line is Mondot as Martinet is riding him and forces the puck free. Alexi collects at center red, shovels it up the far boards to the fuel line. And it's sent in behind the net to Austin McElmer. The 10th forward for Toledo today. Tries to shake off Chaika's check in the left wing corner. Chaika staples him to the boards. And Spencer Watson trying to force the puck free, as is Laguerrier. And it finally comes to Kirill Chaika in the left wing corner. Chaika and Hurd exchanging some shoves as a six-man puck battle ensues. 5.50 to go. Toledo more than content to rag some time. The fuel finally outlet. C.J. Ike into the zone. Right side. Ike tries to take it to goal. Puts a backhand on goal. Christopoulos shuts that down. But the fuel are headed to the power play. A holding minor coming on Toledo. So the fuel will head to their third power play of the game right after this. 5.38 to go. Third period. The fuel trail 6-2. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. This is Dr. Ron Mulletti, Chief Physician Executive at Community Health Network. Screen recording in progress. The league's official streaming service. Skip to intend. Skip to intend. In skip to slide one of one. Skip to slide one of one. Skip to slide one of one. Skip slide one of one. In the fuel. Let I away. Two. Third period. Six. Fifty five. 6. Toledo Walleye T-O-L Skip or HRV. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get 1.9% APR on the 2021 Honda Accord and 0% APR on the 2022 Pilot or HRV. Find your perfect Honda this season. Visit your local Honda dealer today or shop online. This is my kind of holiday. It's the Happy Honda Day sales event at your Central Indiana Honda dealers. See dealer for financing details. Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Indy to the power play with 5.38 to go in the game as Connor Walters is in the box for holding. Indy's 0 for 2 on the power play and has surrendered a shorthanded goal in this game. And it's raining again. And it's raining pretty hard. As the walleye win the draw, send it out to center. Darian Craighead goes back to get it for Indy. Craighead and Texera are the points on this power play unit. Craighead in his own zone. Steers it ahead to Laguerrier. Trying to give and go with Craighead, but is broken up by the walleye. Puck chipped over to the right wing boards. Jared Thomas trying to force it free, and it finally comes out to center where Texera will settle it down into his own line. Up the far side, Mondot gains the line, but try to back diagonal feed to Craighead that came... On the wrong side of the line, so the fuel will have to regroup again. 38 seconds gone in the fuel power play. Texera across center red, across the walleye line. Pass doesn't quite connect, but the fuel trying to maintain possession, and they do. Jared Thomas into the left wing corner, poked off a his stick. In behind the net, sticks with it. Plays it into the right wing corner for Mondot. Back to Thomas, up to the point, Texera. Chips it back off the right wing wall. Thomas works it low. Power move from Malone. Puts it on goal, but Christopoulos is able to be equal to the task. And the walleye clear it all the way down. It's knocked down by Laguerrier, who brings it back across the Toledo line. Actually, it was broken up at the line by Brett Boeing. Mondot comes back to get it. 40 seconds to go in the Fuels power play. 4.17 to go in the game. It appears that brief shower we had has concluded as Laguerrier brings it up across the line. Give and go in behind the net. Pass a little too far out in front for Laguerrier, and it's cleared by the walleye. All the way down the ice. Blackie will settle it down and leave for his defense. Laguerrier to wind it up with 15 seconds to go on the power play. Fakes the delay play and now brings it across the line up the right wing side. Takes a hit from Alexi, but Elmer stays on the puck to Spencer Watson. Left circle, he shoots, it's blocked by Gazzola and chipped out to center 
And here comes Alexi across the line, fires a slap shot and scores. It's like the other night against Norfolk. As soon as the penalty ends, the puck's in the back of the net. Steve Alexi brought it across the line and just hammered a slap shot past Lackey and add a little insult to injury for the fuel. It's now seven to two. Puck was bouncing and rolling on Alexi. He just got it to settle down just enough and was able to beat Lackey high glove. So Alexi, a longtime defenseman, transitioning to forward, scores his second goal of the season, and the Fuel are down seven to two. There's a lot you want to remember about this game, and most of that happened before the puck was dropped. From about the 17-minute mark on in the first period, it's been pretty forgettable for the Fuel. As Alexi from Gazola. The scoring on the goal at 16-26. That's Alexi's first of the game, and Gazola's got a three-point game going with a goal and two assists. You know, Toledo's a very good team, and obviously got a few things going on. They're rested. This is the Fuel's fourth game in six days. Toledo has not played since Sunday, and they had a lot to prove after losing... In Kalamazoo, you don't want to lose your signature events. They lost at home on Sunday and came out with a lot of purpose and the fuel just have not been able to really keep the dam from breaking. And it's just been a lot of goals in bunches. They've come in twos for Toledo. Here's a shot from the point deflected wide. Craighead gets to it, fires one on from a sharp angle, hits the side of the cage. Puck in the right wing corner. In the Fuel's offensive zone, Craighead gets to it, feeds into the left wing circle for a shot save made by Christopoulos on Riley McKay. 2.35 to go in this one, and we won't see the walleye for a while. January 28th, the next game, and that'll be the fifth of the ten meetings between these two teams. That'll be at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Next game for the Fuel will be Sunday at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum against Iowa. Puck drops at 3 o'clock. We'll have the broadcast for you at 2.45. Puck in the left wing corner. Fuel offensive zone. Raked free into the slot. Taken back by Seamus Mullen. Turnaround shot from the high slot goes wide. Martinet for Toledo. Plays it up the near boards to Alexi. Rink wide pass through the neutral zone for McElmurray. Broken up nicely. By, Jordan, or by Ryan Zulsdorf of the Fuel, and then the puck's brought in offside by the Walleye. 2.06 to go in this one. Fuel down 7-2. to A visit by Toledo on January 28th will be throwback night for the Fuel. Sunday will be our first family fun day of the year. Also, Kids Eat Free Day on Sunday. Get your tickets in all Ticketmaster outlets and in the fuelhockey.com, as well as the Indiana Farmers Coliseum box office. Fuel bring it through the neutral zone. Watson's rink-wide pass looking for Thomas. Does not connect and played back out to center by the walleye. Fuel will send it in. Christopoulos around to Lowney, and now Albert will send it rink-wide through the neutral zone, and it's chipped to Keenan. Good poke check as he tried to curl and drag on Chayka. And sent back out to center. Puck taken away by Thomas. Trying to feather a pass across to Mondot, but it's intercepted by Toledo. We'll work it up through the neutral zone. Pass into the left wing corner. And Keenan gets to it, but it's played away from him by Kirill Chayka. Out to center. A minute 11 to go. And the walleye send it back in. Keenan in behind the net. Wismerski goes back to get it. T.J. Hensick in on the forecheck as Wismerski drops it off for Elmir. Now Iverson will wrist it in wide of the goal. Lively carry him off the inboards for a shot from Elmir, and it's canceled out. Schneider pinches down. It squirts free. Bottom of the right wing circle. And C.J. got to it. Got cross-checked to the ice as Schneider took a shot from the right point that goes high and wide. Final 40 seconds of this one. Parcells tackles one of the fuel players over as the puck is sent behind the net. 
Elmir battling for it. 30 seconds to go in this one. And it's taken away by the Walleye. Hensick across his own line. Across center red. We'll just shovel it into the fuel zone with 20. Schneider goes back to get it. Crowd of 10,081. Mostly Walleye partisans begins to rise to its feet. As Schneider takes the puck behind his own net. We'll start it up. The far side for Jessica played into the Toledo end as the horn sounds on Winterfest and a disappointing night for the Fuel as they surrender seven goals tonight in a 7-2 defeat to the Toledo Walleye. The Fuel scored the first one, but two goals 34 seconds apart for Toledo at the end of the first period. To set the tone of the fuel, we're just never quite able to get the ship righted after that. Toledo extended the lead to four to one early in the second period, and then it just kept coming, and uh, they end up winning at seven to two tonight. Shots on goal in the third period. Thir- Eight to seven in favor of the fuel. 36-33, the fuel outshoot Toledo. But they fall seven to two tonight. And Indy will head back to the visiting dugout and clubhouse here at Fifth Third Field. And they'll regroup, and it's a quick turnaround for them as the fuel will be back home on Sunday afternoon to face the Iowa Heartlanders. So a rough evening for the Fuel, a beautiful night, a great event, and really everything was great except the score, and the Fuel ran into a determined Toledo team tonight, and uh, once the dam broke, they couldn't stop the uh, water from gushing through it, and the goals piled up in a 7-2 victory for the Wall. We're going to take a break and come back with our post-game show. Right after this, you're listening to Indie Fuel Hockey. At NT, Stat-